Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Okay, so welcome back to the Udayana KG Osama program for marine science. Today, uh, Gede Karan Sensei will give a lecture about the environmental remote sensing. So, Gede Karan Sensei, please start. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor to, to Sensei and uh, Bibin. So, good up, good morning, everyone. Ohayo gozaimasu. Minasan. So, today, I will... Uh, start the lecture, my lecture. Please wait a moment, I will share my screen first. Okay, uh, can you see the slide? Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, my uh, lecture actually is uh, similar with the last year lecture, but uh, with the little bit update on the contents in the contents. So the title is introduction to environmental remote sensing, and yeah, uh, before we start that uh, we have to uh, to say uh, announce that uh, this. Uh, Topics is actually more uh, physical, yeah. so some of the Udayana student, I think, has already has a, a pre prior knowledge about this. But uh, for Japanese student, maybe uh, some of uh, content is the advance on or or need some more deep explanation. So uh, please don't hesitate to to raise your hand or to uh, respond if you need more explanation for each slides. So the outline of uh, uh, today lecture is first is, uh, I will start from the definition of the remote sensing and then I will uh, describe the basic of the remote sensing itself and I will uh, move to the more focus on the satellite data remote sensing yeah and try to uh, show the some uh, example of application of the use of remote sensing itself. So I will uh, close this uh, lecture with the uh, brief uh, conclusion and student talks in the, the end of this, this lecture. So uh, let's start the, the <coughs> definition of the remote sensing itself. So what is a uh, remote sensing? This is the, the first, uh, to say a question that arise for the for all of you to understand uh, the word of the remote and the same thing itself so from the figure you can see that uh, some uh, example of the uh, platform or instrument that used to take a picture of to observe the uh, earth surfaces like uh, aerial television from the past and then aerial photography uh, satellite now they get more the advanced technology and then also space shuttle and so many uh, uh, instruments now like a drone and UAV so this actually uh, this uh, instrument all take the picture uh, with the uh, distance yeah as you can see that there is the the various of the distance from the low altitude, like 0 0.3 kilometer, and to the uh, very far or to the highest uh, altitude, like uh, more than uh, 500 kilometers. Yet. So this all this uh, sensor grab the information without the contact of the earth of uh, surface itself. So from this <coughs> illustration, we can <coughs> go to the meaning of the word remote so remote means far away <clears throat> like in this picture and then uh, same things mean the graving the information uh, <clears throat> and we, we combine the word then we can see that uh, <clears throat> remote sensing is uh, sensing the object or things from a distance like the bigger so so this is just the illustration <clears throat> then if we have to say uh, uh, 
uh, we explore our uh, biological uh, sensor that in the human uh, body, we actually has a uh, five uh, sense that we use uh, three as a remote sensor. So you can imagine now that uh, we can get a picture from our eyes and then also we can get the uh, smell from our nose. Yeah. So, and then also we can uh, get information from <clears throat> sound that we use our uh, hearing. Yeah. So this actually uh, uh, the simple uh, illustration, how actually our body also use the remote sensing techniques to get the information. Because when you uh, interpret the object by using your eyes, you don't need to, we don't need to the, the, to the uh, touch the object to get that's the, the, the color, for example, when you, you see the color of the uh, rainbow, the color of the, the sky, the color of the ocean, the water and the, the color of the leaf and the vegetation. So we can uh, distinct the color green, blue, uh, white, like clouds, and then uh, black, you, like your hair. And so many, so we don't need to, to contact that. That's mean uh, remote sensing. And also, so uh, the smell, yeah, good smell and also bad smell or something like that. And then also hearing uh, the small sound and also uh, noise, yeah, and or the music and something like that. So you you don't need to, to touch the, the instrument of uh, music <coughs> to hear uh, also the telephone. This is the, the simple one. So <clears throat> now you understand that remote sensing means uh, how to say, uh, grabbing information without the contact of the uh, object or the surface. In <clears throat> so, non remote sensing, yeah, they accept uh, three of that. The two of our uh, sense uh, is uh, still need to contact the object when you taste of the food, like ice cream or something like that. So, you need to, 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 to touch the ice cream by your tongue. That's mean that there's not remote sensing. Also, uh, use your skin, for example, when you want to know the, the smooth or the rough or the surfaces, you need to touch by your hands or, the, or hot or maybe cold or something like that. That is not uh, remote sensing. So uh, then if you all are seeing and reading my presentation or this presentation, so actually, no, you are doing the remote sensing. So this is a simple <clears throat> uh, conclusion of the of, about the definition. So when you seeing this presentation, you are reading my uh, slide. That means you are doing the remote sensing. Okay. So this is the the definition of remote sensing. Then for the scientific matter, so remote sensing is the science. And to some extent, like uh, uh, many uh, scientists use also art of acquiring information about the earth surface without actually being in contact with it. This is done by sensing and recording reflected or emitted. So I will explain later what is reflected or emitted uh, energy and processing, analyzing and applying that information. So this is all. Uh, uh, to say the definition of the remote sensing when we use in term of the uh, scientific uh, uh, purposes. Yeah. And as already I explained before, you and me are using it everywhere with, with your biological uh, sensor and also artificial sensor that I will explain uh, in the next slide. Okay. So uh, now imagine when you sit down in the very nice sofa, nice chat and with a relaxed uh, situation in your room, you want to change the channel, you want to change the uh, to see information uh, within, or also you, you want to uh, switch on the 
air conditioner or something and something like that. So you use the remote, yeah. So when you're operating all this instrument, you also, uh, what to say, uh, can be, let's say that you use the remote sensing technique to do the, the, the this kind of work. That's why uh, I mentioned that you and me are using it uh, everywhere also, almost yeah, and also every time, you know, in our daily life. <clears throat> so how actually uh, this uh, remote of television work? Yeah? So just the simple step, yeah. So press the button to change the channel and then the sensor will understand your wish by the numeric uh, numerical uh, platform in the uh, remote and the television then the uh, the sensor will send the signal from the remote <clears throat> then television will receive this uh, signal from the sensor and channel change so this is the simple thing. so many uh the work that uh i would say are also uh as the remote sensing technique also as a simple like like, like this yeah so you you uh, can very easy to do the the work by the uh, distance and using the, the two sensor or the one single sensor or two sensor or multi sensor uh, in some cases so this is the the, the step that to understand how actually uh, the distance uh, from the distance we can uh, uh, we wish or change the the information. <clears throat> the, your eyes also, yeah. So actually, our body is uh, uh, to say complete with a uh, very uh, to say a comprehensive uh, system, yeah, of uh, remote sensing. So now you can uh, refresh back or review actually how. Do you think your eyes are working? And then how your television is working, how your radio is working. So just think that, I think this is the very uh, good example of uh, remote sensing in everyday life. Okay. So for uh, eyes, it's, this is uh, that uh, to say uh, will be uh, very similar with the camera and also other uh, uh, optical sensor in satellite platform. Uh, it's a similar, uh, <clears throat> almost similar uh, a step and also a process in it. Actually, uh, in our eyes, the light coming coming from object uh, perceived by, uh, by our eyes, your eyes, and then uh, our eyes will read or scan and this can will get some uh, information yeah and send this into the to our brain so the brain processes this information and then lets you like recognize what you are seeing as a, <coughs> a interpretation of the each object that you see so this is for, this is the illustration very <coughs> uh, let's see simple illustration how I saw working it then we will multi also uh, repeat this uh, concept for the uh, camera and for the satellite uh, emergency so now because uh, our major is uh, not in the medical for like using eyes and also use uh, uh, to see our own uh, her so we usually uh, use the artificial remote sensing to get information from the Earth's surfaces and also from the uh, atmospheric sometimes. So now we will focus on the uh, the advanced uh, technology in terms of remote sensing is the uh, satellite uh, uh, technology. So uh, I believe that all of you uh, ever heard about the, this kind of the, uh, information like the satellite orbit and then uh, uh, what to say uh, an accuracy uh, the the application also so this is the the, the 
the scope of this uh, lecture now. So uh, how how uh, satellites see the world surface actually? So this is uh, the, the the pictures uh, the illustration actually uh, how the uh, the satellite can get us can give us the the accurate information about our uh, about the position about the object and about the also the uh, the chains of the the surfaces so in the world of science yeah now we talk about the our major the remote sensing means observing the earth with the sensor from high above its surface so uh, because they are so high up these sensor make image of, of every large area sometimes uh, holes from fence on a region uh, depend on the uh, resolution uh, we will talk later and depend on the, uh, the the quality of the sensor so <clears throat> sensor means uh, the one of the part of the uh, remote sensing system that meant by the electronical uh, uh, to say uh, combination yeah that uh, made by the in our the engineer that put on the uh, platform. So there is uh, some uh, uh, sensor in the remote sensing that we will dis discuss later. So from the uh, figure, we can uh, have to say, uh, exp explain that the, how the, the, what kind of the satellite are operated. So actually, from the the altitude, the highest altitude, the 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 satellite can uh, give us uh, various information. First is the transferring information, like the communication technology, communication satellite and broadcasting satellite. So this is uh, the typical of the uh, satellite platform that. Uh, provide us uh, like the, now we can do some uh, online uh, class or uh, you use WhatsApp, you use, you use uh, uh, Google, YouTube or something. Uh, they uh, what to say need to connect to the, the satellite uh, data. Yeah. And then uh, defining positions. So this is very important for the navigation uh in the ocean for example or in the forest for example so one of the the famous uh, technology of this is the gps or global positioning satellite so we uh now actually we are uh, our human uh, our activities human activities is depend on on this uh, technology uh, for, for uh, particularly for the the uh, to say the navigation yeah? without this uh, technology uh, we cannot uh, we can Im imagine that how difficult will uh, some uh, to say uh, to find the target or to 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 uh, navigate the, the the direction of our uh, for example the physical vehicle and our vessel and uh, or airplane or something like this is, will uh, be dangerous yeah? And the, the, the third one is the measuring object. So uh, this, <clears throat> from the three of this uh, oper operation, uh, in our cases, so we mostly uh, use the measuring object uh, as, uh, and we will get many, a uh, lot of <clears throat> data, to uh, explore uh, the condition of the earth, <coughs> earth surfaces. Yeah. So we will uh, focus on the, the third one later. Okay. So yeah, yeah this is the, just the illustration how the, the, the satellite operate, operation yeah, that uh, will uh, supply us the various information like the communication, and then the position and also the condition of the earth surfaces. So this uh, now, yeah, we all uh, 
human activities will depend on the, the this uh, uh, or satellite operation actually. So I will show you uh, some example first how the beautiful of the uh, Earth surfaces that can be observed from the satellite data. So this is the I think for Japanese student uh, you uh, will uh, familiar with this figure. This is the Kanto area, the Tokyo. Yeah, you can see that the the color is the uh, the white color, and white and black color, yeah, actually. So the white color indicate that the snow cover on this uh, area. So this is uh, uh, one of the beautiful images from the Sentinel-2 satellite data. So uh, you can explore more what is the Sentinel-2 data actually. So this is the, uh, the occur on, on January 6, 22. So the snow uh, cover more than uh, uh, five centimeters. Yeah? Uh, for all area in the Tokyo. So uh, from this figure, we can understand that uh, even the, how to say, uh, periodic uh, 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 change in the uh, surface, we still can analyze and we still can get information. If we have uh, previous uh, data of uh, the same uh, season, for example, or same period, we can analyze the difference of the snow cover. We can see that uh, which area need, uh, for example, alerts, we need uh, some, uh, what to say, action of uh, this uh, condition. So this is the very beautiful, yeah, this is the snow, and this, I think this is the center of the Tokyo. Uh, actually, uh, in I was graduated in Chiba, and I think the, the snow cover uh, less in, in Chiba compared to the, the Tokyo. Yeah, this, and then this is the landmark of Japan. Uh, this is the Mount uh, Fuji. Uh, this uh, picture uh, take, uh, taken by the ELOS, yeah? ELOS Advanced Lens Observation uh, Satellite from the Japan uh, Space Agency or JAXA. So the or we can see that the Daichi. So this is the <clears throat> very high resolution, uh, spatial resolution, and we can see uh, how uh, Mount Fuji or Fuji Sound is very uh, uh, beautiful in from the satellite data. So what is the point that uh, so many uh, many how to say many information we can get and and many analysis we can do by in this one uh, image. Yeah? For example, we can understand how the snow cover, uh, if we can get the series of the image, of course, we can uh, analyze of the snow cover uh, temporally. So we can understand how the, for example, climate change uh, impact, influence of this snow cover. And then the, the other things is we can understand how the, uh, to say the uh, land cover surrounding the Mount Fuji like this. This is many uh, city here. Uh, I know uh, I knew that many uh, city and uh, dense population surrounding the uh, Fuji sound. So we can uh, understand the change uh, year by year by the series of data. Of course, not one image because we need uh, temporal data. But, but at least by this data, we can yeah, you can see the 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 the, the uh, Mount Fuji and the surrounding area uh, very clearly. So this is the the bright uh, colors of the uh, city or the urban area, and the uh, green area. So the still vegetation there, but this also there's the the to say the uh, <clears throat> brown there yeah, or or uh, this is the open area. Yeah, we need to uh, to go to the field to 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 uh, verify what is actually on this area. So so many many uh, uh, information that we can grab by the distance yeah, of Mount Fuji. So this is the the other example. 
uh, that uh, very beautiful image also by the uh, to say the Landsat yeah, satellite. So this Landsat image, uh, we can see that the uh, uh, Pigeon Lakes, yeah, in Canada and surrounding by the various uh, land cover, uh, like a, uh, to say uh, agriculture and then uh, how to say yeah. industry and also uh, urban area, but from this uh, Landsat image or satellite lines at satellite data we can see clearly that we can distinguish which one is the water which one is the uh, uh to say uh land which one is the terrestrial and other thing so mainly the water uh, will appear as the black color in the optical satellite data so uh, that's mean when you uh try to uh, analyze the the surfaces and if you find there's some uh, area with the black uh, color like this dark uh, dark i mean dark uh, color so the the first impression we, we you can uh, recognize that that is the uh, water body at, at, at least yeah but all of course, there is some some uh, object also has a similar uh, picture, but we can uh, at least we can understand this. Uh, this is the possibilities the the water. So this is the lake, yeah. Like you can see that uh, the uh, area. It's a pretty beautiful image. So this is the the picture of uh, other uh, uh, in <coughs> what to say uh, uh, by the landsat, yeah, like. Uh, to understand about the uh, how uh, urban area and neighboring with the uh, highly uh, area, so we can see the, the the different color means the different uh, object. So the purple is uh, mostly for the uh, urban area, and then for the uh, bright is like uh, the vegetation uh, area. So this is very beautiful actually. This lens at this, and this is the uh, how the uh, landsat can capture the uh, farm land. Uh, also, this is in in the US and in the Kansas. Yeah, we, because we knew that uh, uh, US has uh, the 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 largest country that used for the agriculture. So this are uh, the. Or to say the the satellite data is mainly used for uh, analysis analysis uh, of the uh, soil and, and many parts like uh, water uh, sup, uh, supply and so soil. So this is like a, a crop. Yeah. The green area is the crop uh, 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 fields. So very beautiful and very uh, easy to uh, to different between the crop and the open area and also from the uh, other other condition yeah because there's this the stages uh, on the farm uh, area from the uh, watering until crop so uh, we can understand the different of uh, the condition by the series of the data yeah this in for rice pill also i think i found that many uh, study use the satellite data to to understand about the rice field uh, states in Japan, so this is also uh, very, and this is the uh, other uh, landsat in uh, Indiana. Yeah, uh, you can now you can see also the ducks. Uh, feature is mean the water. Uh, this is because it's the river and this is the dam. So it's the the name is white river, but actually the the feature of the water on the satellite also uh, uh, still dark not white yet. Uh, except there's some uh, suspended matter consists in the water like uh, the coloring so this is a uh, uh, and there's a different the same area but because the the uh, to say the different condition this is the flooding so uh, the water will uh, mix with the sediment or some and other they will make a different color in the sat sensor and the satellite data. So this is the how satellite data or sensor also can 
uh, used to uh, analyze the, the the change of the water quality. Uh, you can see that the uh, blue color means the expand of the uh, expanding the uh, water volume uh, of the river. You can see that. So there's the uh, huge uh, area influence affected by this flood. So this uh, also the uh, example that or the satellite data also used in the polar region, so to uh, or on the high uh, altitude to measure the glacier. So this is the uh, Columbia glacier that uh, captured by uh, Landsat satellite. So yeah, very clear. Yeah, very clear. So no, uh, what to say? Many. Uh, uh, study uh, also used uh, to analyze the glacier not only in the polar but in the other in the tropical area but in the uh, high mountain like in Indonesia this is the the Jaya Vijaya mountain in, in Papua so according to the study using the satellite data uh, the glacier now uh, become less and less and there is some prediction in 2050, there's no more glacier in, in uh, or the ice, sorry, uh, ice uh, uh, in the, in the uh, Jayavi Jaya, in no more glacier in 2050. So this is based on the satellite data. So this is some uh, uh, example of how uh, uh, satellite can observe the disaster yeah this is the apokano in moon state helens in uh, <clears throat> 90 actually they erupted uh, in 1980 but because uh, landsat operated from the 1970 so they they can make a series data of this uh, uh, condition so what we can do from what we can get from this uh, uh, picture so of course we can Analyze the where's the the uh, uh, larva or uh, magma uh, flow, yeah. So by that information, I think uh, to say a government or uh, people can understand which area is uh, prohibited to stay on something like that. So this is the beautiful image how uh, satellite can. Satellite data can observe the uh, uh, disaster a point like a volcano or something. And this is the how uh, satellite data can uh, capture or can observe the wildfire. So this is an example in the South Dakota by Landsat image also provided by NASA. So uh, in Japan, many rare, very rare cases about the wildfire, but uh, in uh, U.S. or in our tropical region, Equator, like Indonesia, this many, uh, to say many uh, wildfire uh, in the, uh, especially in the summer, or uh, El Nino, something like that. There's, uh, then our uh, stakeholder or government will uh, need uh, huge of satellite data to analyze and to take a decision how uh, uh, will handle this kind of the. Uh, to say wildfire so this is <clears throat> example just a sample yeah and this is the again this is the uh, Landsat image for uh, Tokyo uh, so uh, this occurred on August 17 2019 uh, so from uh, Landsat or uh, single uh, image we can understand about the uh, to say the the land cover in in Tokyo, yeah. So you can see that very rare uh, vegetation now in 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 Tokyo. So almost uh, covered by the urban area. Yeah, we understand that Tokyo is the the, the number one uh, the bigger city yeah, in the world and the very high uh, with the highest population also. So this is an example how we can understand the land cover. So not only land cover, but uh, satellite data also provide uh, other, uh, to say, uh, wavelength or band that we can use to analyze the heat. Yeah. So this is uh, example how uh, the, the 
the below image show the how uh, the temperature land surface temperature uh, in uh, Tokyo observed by Lensa. So we can understand that the the different color, so the different temperature, yeah? the bright color, uh, the red bright, so the highest temperature, and the darkest uh, color, so the uh, lowest temperature. So uh, this uh, temperature actually used for many uh, purposes for the atmospheric condition and for um, uh, other uh, uh, to say uh, study. Yeah? So this is the example of Landsat. So I also saw the how uh, to say uh, satellite data can uh, uh, be used for the disaster management. So actually, this is one uh, example. This picture from the not from camera actually. Yeah, this yeah of course this similar like a camera but taken from the uh, distance. This is used a satellite quick, but so the image so clear and so uh, so like uh, so close, yeah, because the the resolution of the satellite data uh, quick, but is very high. So this is an example of image uh, 2004, yeah, before the tsunami in Banda Aceh. So we can see uh, the, the the land cover is still uh, to say. Uh, exist like a mangrove uh, roof uh, i mean this is the office or government a local government uh, office and uh, school also and also the the brides yeah this is uh, you can see that but what happened when the uh, after tsunami you can see that uh, from the same sensor from the same satellite data uh, but after tsunami you uh, there's the very uh, big difference or very uh, huge change, massive change in the Banda Aceh. So the one bridge is uh, to say uh, crash, and then we can uh, to say we can recognize where's the mangrove, where's the vegetation, where's the roof, where's the office. So almost uh, blur here. Yeah? You can see that clearly. So the point is uh by the pre and post image so pre and post image we of the uh, of the disaster so we can uh analyze which area is uh, uh to see uh, uh maximum effect yeah or with uh, minimum and how we can access the data or something so at the time uh uh, to say uh, international agency, uh, all international supported our government and supply the satellite data to uh, try to uh, analyze the, the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, to say, uh, uh, not only one image, I mean, what the satellite, so, so many satellite data they use and uh, can uh, later on can. <coughs> make uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, res uh, to say the result to make a decision yeah? how we handle this uh, disaster and how we prevent, uh, make a prevention or preventing this kind of... Uh, in Japan also in 2011, I, I think, so many satellite data used to analyze the tsunami and, the, it, and its impact on the land. Yeah? So uh, based on that <coughs> definition and example, so now we can move. Uh, why should we use remote sensing? Yeah? So can we do without that uh, techniques or we can approach this? Yeah, this is some reason. Not all measurement locations are accessible. This is very important. Yeah, yeah, For example, yeah. atmosphere, a space, yeah. um, polar region, ocean. Uh, yeah. How we can uh, access that uh, area, especially uh, atmosphere. Yeah? So that's that's why this is sensor is so, uh, so very solutive, yeah. And then remote sensing facilities creation of long time series and extending measurement areas. So <clears throat> by this uh, series data, we can uh, 
analyze the the change of the uh, the uh, area, period by period. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can imagine that for example, like a land sat satellite, land satellite. Yeah, the, the abbreviation of land sat land satellite, land sat uh, operated since uh, uh, 1970. So, uh, from that data, you can uh, you can analyze the difference between uh, almost uh, five decades. What is different between uh, four years, four, forty years ago, and com compare with the uh, current situation like uh, uh, vegetation, uh, or to say an, uh, uh, land cover, uh, temperature, uh, and even a uh, uh, disaster like a typhoon, for example, how many typhoon, how how frequency typhoon uh, developed recently? So all uh, kind of uh, atmosphere uh, condition can be observed by the, the satellite data. And then, sorry, uh, for many phenomena, like a global measurement are needed there. Yeah. I mean, uh, in in this uh, sphere, uh, our our globe yeah one phenomena is is uh, connecting with other phenomena for example uh, uh, el nino for example now we facing the el nino in in indonesia yeah uh, the 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 measurement in pacific region like to observe the the sea surface temperature in 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 central pacific is uh, can be have a connection with the uh, temperature in the Indonesian seas, for example, and also uh, uh, in the uh, South China Sea and also in the, the Japan Sea. So they they can uh, we can measure the the the, the global uh, condition in in one platform and using the same period of the satellite data. So this is the very important, and then. Uh, on per measurement basis, uh, remote sensing measurement usually are less expensive than in situ measurement. You can, uh, yeah, you can analyze that. Uh, the cost when we go to the polar region, for example, to to measure the glacier, we I think that will take a, a, a high, a expensive yeah, expensive uh, cost. And compare that we download the satellite data and we analyze just for. But of course, in some cases, we need the the validation. We we need to verify the the to say the uh, uh, satellite uh, uh, interpretation by using in situ data. Then then we need uh, we need to do the the field observation. But uh, mostly, yeah, big mostly because uh, now. Uh, recently, so so many uh, algorithm and uh, combined with the artificial intelligence AI, so the the the, the accuracy is increasing, increase and uh, less of uh, field study needed in this this kind. So this is the historical of uh, remote sensing. I'll just so briefly it's, uh, starting from the balloon uh, photography, almost in uh, 1858 yeah. And then uh, people uh, developed the cameras, uh, starting by Fijian in 1903, uh, and then uh, also used the, some, before that, that's kite photography, yeah, before this is 1990. Uh, 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 and then the, the, the massive uh, the use of the remote sensing is in World War One and also World War II. Uh, uh, in military basis, there's uh, many uh, platform deployed uh, and then used to uh, as spionage, spionage right, yeah? for uh, to say to to identify the target. And then starting from in 1947, uh, there's the space uh, technology deployed, and you uh, remember that some picture taken from the moon, yeah, from our astronaut. In 2016, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, the uh, historic of the remote sensing. Until now, yeah, this now it's the uh, very uh, many uh, 
uh, country developed uh, the space agency and uh, established the uh, uh, to say uh, launch this uh, platform like uh, many many satellite data. Okay, until that, uh, any question or comment, please. Can you understand what I uh, explained or my explanation is too fast or too slow? Okay, I hope you uh, understand because it's very uh, hard to say, uh, basic, yeah. <clears throat> okay, now we continue to the, how uh, remote sensing uh, actually worked, yeah by the system uh, remote sensing. So actually a uh, remote sensing system consists of uh, uh, to say as uh, about the uh, seven component yeah, in general from A to G. So A is the, the source of the electromagnetic waves. Uh, it's the sun itself, yeah. This is the our, uh, and then continue to the uh, transmitting or radiation of the global electromagnetic to the uh, atmosphere until uh, to say uh, surface, yeah, Earth surface. In uh, atmosphere and Earth surface, there's the interaction between uh, electromagnetic wave uh, with the object. So this is not, not simple uh, basis, but there's the interaction there that we will explain later. And then uh, after interaction, there's some uh, amount of the uh, signal uh, back to the atmosphere and will record by the recording by the uh, sensor, yeah, D. And then uh, from the sensor, because this is all already uh, uh, by design by the, the, the engineer and human and uh, can transmission or uh, go to the station. Transmitting go to the, the, the station and from the uh, <coughs> station uh, to the user, but before that there's, there's some uh, uh, analysis by, uh, by the interpretation analysis by the engineer and in G, there, there is the user there. So as like us, we use the information for the uh, study or for the uh, various purposes. So this is actually in general how uh, a remote sensing from the sun until user. Yeah, we can uh, explain one by one. Later. But before that, uh, I show you about the, the uh, remote sensing uh, source. Uh, the main source of the signal is the uh, sun, yeah, radiation, sun radiation. But you can answer by yourself, can remote sensing uh, employ anything other than electromagnetic radiation? So if you uh, this if ever heard about uh, this, yeah, so this mean uh, some or to say a uh, technology like the USG and then uh, echo sounder or uh, port bathymetry. So that's mean the remote sensing not the source of the signal not only uh, sun but also, there is the active remote sensing that we can explain later that uh, the signal will be uh, produced by sensor, uh, by the human, and used to a uh, specific uh, uh, target. So you can see that in first image, there is the, how to say, the sensor that observed the uh, baby on in belly, yeah? and you, uh, in, there's, without contact with the baby. So the doctor can analyze how the baby condition, uh, health or something uh, wrong and something like that. And also in the ocean. So we can get, uh, we can uh, figure out the the depth 
uh, of the ocean or the the the, the contour of the bathymetry without uh, uh, touch the, the 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 floor yeah so you can see floor you you can uh, now you can uh, uh, get uh, any information about how depth of the water how depth the, of the ocean so uh, actually they 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 the, the scientist doesn't uh, go to the uh, uh, dive yeah? diving to the 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 to say the water column but they use the instrument like a, a transducer that or echo sounder to uh, measure the depth. Yeah. So this is the 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 example that uh, the remote sensing technique uh, that uh, accept uh, of the sun radiation. Yeah? But uh, in this uh, lecture, I will focus on the how uh, we use the sun radiation as the main source of the the uh, remote sensing system. So we start from the electromagnetic radiation. I think, yeah, yeah, almost of you maybe have heard about the electromagnetic EM. Yeah, this is very basic, and uh, maybe you got this in uh, senior high school. I think, yeah. So, uh, the sun radiation is the first uh, uh, requirement for remote sensing. Yeah. Because this is the the un energy source to illuminate the target. So, uh, this <coughs> uh, electromagnetic wave will be uh, divided in some uh, some uh, to say some channel or some uh, bandwidth yeah, that will will uh, make a difference between uh, sensor how they determine the uh, object based on the wavelength they use on the uh, sensor. So actually the remote sensing uh, that we call it later is how to say uh, electromagnetic wave spectrum is used uh, for uh, uh, to say observe object by uh, radio, uh, reflect, reflection uh, or also or emitted uh, and also backscatter later and then the like energy characteristic by characterized by the the wavelength for the optical uh, color yeah like uh, we know or the rainbow yeah red green blue and other color actually uh, distinctive uh, based on the wavelength yeah so each color has a different wavelength. So this is the uh, uh, the principle of the optical sensor uh, And then the full range of this wavelength, we call it uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum. And our eyes, uh, like a camera also, like uh, like optical sensor on satellite also, is a uh, uh, sense is uh, is the in the visible portion of spectrum. Eh? So this is the how to say how uh, electromagnetic wave uh, uh, characteristic. So it consists of two uh, term actually. This is electrical uh, field uh, E, yeah. With uh, this is a vertical axis. We illustrate with vertical axis with uh, various in magnitude in uh, direction perpendicular to the direction in which the radiation is traveling. So we make with ninety degree. Uh, in the direction, and then uh, magnetic field oriented at right angle to the electrical field. So both these fields travel at the speed of light. Yeah, three times uh, ten power eight meter per second. So I will not I will uh, not dip in this slide because it's already. So this is the characteristic of electromagnetic uh, uh, wavelength. So you now uh, can uh, uh, to say uh, review your 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 senior high school class. Yeah, there's the lambda here. Lambda is the wavelength, uh, and then uh, we can measure it in one wave cycle. Yeah, from peak to peak or. Uh, 
uh, from P or one one fake or one failure. Yeah? This we can uh, measure this, uh, and then <coughs> there is the what to say uh, amplitude amplitude. Yeah. The, okay, this is the symbol of lambda, so we can see from the figure. So from the uh, we we measure it in in unit like a meter, decimeter, centimeter until Armstrong, yeah, like this. Yeah, this is ten power minus ten. Uh, this is used to also uh measure of wavelength in uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So this is the relation between the uh, lambda, uh, to say a frequency and uh, speed. So it's, this is a very simple uh, formula. Uh, speed is equal to lambda times the frequency. So that means uh, the higher the highest uh, uh, lambda will uh, has uh, say uh, uh, <coughs> the lower of frequency. Yeah? You can you can get the relation from this uh, uh, equation. So frequency normally measured in hertz, yeah. So and the uh, the one per frequency is the period, uh, and measured in uh, time, like a second and hours and something. So the the okay, this is just calculation. This is very simple. We can, for example, uh, when we have a uh, uh, um, light speed like a three time ten power 8 meter per second and the uh, electromagnetic wave uh, as a frequency is uh, 500,000 gigahertz for example so what is the wavelength of the radiation and we can uh, use this uh, formula and uh, uh, adjust the unit to depend on the, 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 the how to say what uh, the unit request like this is the micrometer micrometer yeah so we can uh get the answer like this so uh, lambda is uh, uh six point ten uh, power uh, seven uh, meters then we can uh change to the micrometer so that's the uh, relation between lambda and frequency and then there's the as i explained before the electromagnetic spectrum will divide it in uh some area of some region yeah we, we 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 call it a region so this is the for example we can uh, classify from the wavelength the red graph so the how uh to say the uh, electromagnetic spectrum is uh, divided in uh uh various reg uh, region like a gamma rays ultraviolet uh, x-ray ultraviolet uh, visible, this is the, the, the color, so the visible, and an infrared, microwave, and radio waves. So this is the, the, the basic of the uh, uh, wavelength, yeah? classification of the wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum. So what uh, we can uh, uh, to say? explain from its uh, region, so we can see that uh, a uh, visible band. This is our eyes. Uh, 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 region yeah, walk in this uh, uh, wavelength from the uh, 400 uh, nanometer to the 700 and uh, 50 nanometer from the red to blue. Yeah, so from the this visible and the the uh, longest uh, the lower uh, wavelength. Now the shorter uh, wavelength uh, is the gamma rays and X rays uh, has the uh, higher yeah higher energy, so that's why uh, for the gamma X ray and ultraviolet is uh, is not uh, used in uh, for the common study because this is a danger for the human body. Uh, we prohibited, for example, gamma rays will make uh, some modification for our uh, cell or other uh, our uh, body. Yeah. But for the uh, from the visible band until the radio wave, is uh, uh, we can tolerate tolerate by the our body, so we can use uh, this 
uh, a wavelength for the uh, various uh, aspect of remote sensing. So this is the the, the uh, purple graph. So the uh, the relation between uh, frequency and uh, uh, energy. Yeah. So the lower frequency will as uh, uh, to say uh, uh, lower uh, uh, energy and the the the, <coughs> the high frequency will has the higher uh, energy. So we start from the ultraviolet. So this is the ultraviolet uh, region or range. Uh, you can see that uh, the, how to say the uh, ball line. So the the the, the boundary of the uh, wavelength from the uh, ten minus a uh, ten power minus nine until uh, uh, ten minus uh, <clears throat> six. Yeah, we can see that. Uh, this is the the portion of the ultraviolet. So, uh, some of uh, Earth's surface materials, uh, like uh, primarily rocks and mineral, fluoresces or emit visible light when illuminated uh, by the UV radiation. So they will respond, and that's why uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, in general used for the this kind of purposes to to measure the uh, some uh, characteristic from the specific material like rock, mineral, or something like that. Because they they have a interaction that can be measured by the sensor. So next to the visible light, so visible spectrum. So this range of wavelength that used by our eyes. So from the, as you say, from the almost part of 400 nanometer to the 700 uh, open of nanometer from the red this is uh, the longest uh, wavelength is the red color and the lowest wavelength is the uh, purple yeah so this is the 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 the, the what say the range of the visible spectrum so so I will uh, try to explain briefly how uh, uh, each uh, color as uh, uh, to say uh, uh, depend on the wavelength. Yeah. So this we can see that if we let's say uh, violet, our uh, for, for violet is uh, the, the lowest uh, wavelength. So this, they will uh, what to say uh, uh, radiate like interacted like get make a, uh, a color like uh, violet, and then blue. This is blue, and uh, the color is. And the wavelength is from uh, 0 0.4 until 0 0.5 micrometer or 400 to 500 nanometers, so depend on the, on the units. Yeah. And then the green, uh, yellow, orange, and the longest is red. So this is the red color. So this is the, the concept of colors uh, from the visible spectrum. So how... Uh, uh, Reds, green, blue as the primary color, and we can produce uh, uh, other color beyond these uh, three uh, primary colors. Yeah, we can uh, place back to the 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 how to say the uh, uh, prism. Yeah, you can see the how the prism can uh, how to say uh, uh, make a. Uh, several uh, rainbow color yeah, just because of uh, modify the wavelength. So you can see uh, by the prism, there is the, the different uh, wavelength uh, that representing by the, the size of the prism yeah, will produce the different color. So this is, that's why uh, our, uh, how to say, uh, visible uh, spectrum is, is uh, we can measure by the wavelength. So it's very uh, easy and very uh, to say uh, practice. Yeah, we can use uh, various aspect of this uh, principle. And then infrared. Infrared is uh, is not uh, uh, we is not in our uh, eyes uh, region, but uh, we can use the instrument to capture the uh, infrared uh, uh, reflector. Yeah. So this is the the region of infrared, uh, just after the red color until uh, 
10 minus uh, power minus 4, yeah, you can see that uh, there's uh, uh, three uh, type of uh, infrared. There's a near infrared, mid infrared, and far infrared. So almost uh, uh, similar for the, the like a visible classification from the uh, violet to the red, but in, in this infrared is the near until far. So we can uh, use the wavelength for observe the, for example, uh, near infrared, you can use for the thermal or temperature in night time or something. Like that. So infrared usually use for the night time uh, situation to, to measure money. Yeah object and microwave uh, spectrum is this a uh, little bit longer than uh, infrared uh, from the one millimeter to the one one meter so actually for the remote sensing uh, technique that used for the uh, for the uh, picture or image imagery so I think the, the microwave is the last uh, wavelength that used for the the remote sensing uh, imagery yeah. Because uh, radio uh, wavelength we, uh, is not for imagery, but it's not is is for the communication. So this is the the uh, classification for the microwave like a P band, L band, S band, C band, K band. Yeah, this is uh, the name of the uh, microwave uh, region yeah? for from the uh, millimeter to the one meter. So L band, uh, one of the uh, uh, to say. Uh, Japanese satellite allows PALSA use this L band satellite uh, sensor. Yeah. And then uh, that's the uh, concept of the electromagnetic wave and the spectrum. Now we continue to the how actually this electromagnetic uh, spectrum will uh, in, interact, yeah, will interact, uh, will have an interaction with the uh, object on the surfaces. So uh, there is the some uh, type of the interaction by the object to the uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, spectrum. First is the scattering. So uh, scattering is occurs when uh, particle or large uh, gas uh, gas molecules. Uh, present in the atmosphere uh, and then interact with and cause the electromagnetic radiation to be redirected uh, from its original form. So the, the, the point is to uh, redirected, yeah? That's meant the, the scattering. So there is a, a various type of scattering. First is the Rayleigh's uh, scattering. So uh, this is the, the example of the illustration of Rayleigh's scattering. Uh, commonly uh, exist or occur in the uh, atmosphere. Yeah, you can see that uh, how the uh, to see we can see the the sky as a blue color. So this because of the red scattering, and then uh, this the me scattering. So uh, this the <coughs> scattering that beyond of the atmosphere, but actually. Uh, occur uh, on the uh, some uh, layer of the atmosphere, the, the, the upper layer of the atmosphere. And there's the non-selective scattering, the, the last one. This uh, uh, typically in the uh, cloud, yeah, or the cloud. So what is the relative scattering? This uh, when the particles are very small, yeah, and then compared to the wavelength of the radiation. Uh, for example, uh, the, I have to say, uh, uh, the visible, for example, visible wavelength uh, as a uh, wavelength from the uh, 400 nanometer until 700 nanometer. If this uh, wavelength, yeah, uh, past the or uh, particle, uh, the smaller than wavelength, so this will uh, <coughs> to see uh, make us uh, really scattering. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, relic really scattering and the consequence of this uh, relic really scattering. So uh, how the the sky uh, will appear as the blue yeah, during the day yeah, because of uh, the sunlight uh, past the atmosphere and the shorter wavelength, 
the blue one, the blue uh, spectrum is the very uh, short, yeah, the shorter of the visible, and then we'll uh, pass the uh, to say, uh, uh, still, yeah, we'll reflect it in the, in the atmosphere because other uh, wavelength, uh, the longer wavelength will pass the particle. So that's why the the sky uh, uh, appears as a blue color in the uh, day. Yeah. And uh, means uh, scattering occur when the uh, particles are just about the same size of the uh, wavelength of the radiation. Yeah, for example, uh, the uh, to say the uh, red uh, web uh, wavelength is about the seven hundred uh, nanometer, but the particle also the size is uh, seven hundred uh, seven hundred nanometer. So dust, pollen, smoke, and water paper are common cause of miscattering, yeah, uh, because uh, this uh, affect longer wavelength than uh, affected by the railing uh, scattering. So the third one is non-selective scattering. This occur when the particles are much larger than the wavelength of the radiation. So uh, the example of this uh, phenomena is uh, how the the cloud appears as the white there. Yeah. So because the cloud is uh, the cloud particle is uh, much larger than the wavelength. Uh, that's why uh, all uh, uh, sun radiation or all uh, visible spectrum will uh, redirect it, yeah, and then make the white color. Actually, there is no white color in, in the spectrum. You, you can see from the previous slide, there is no black color, there is no uh, white color on the uh, uh, visible uh, spectrum. Yeah, black and uh, white is as a consequence of the interaction between the uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation and object. Yeah, for example, dark or black signal, that's because all object observe the uh, observed uh, uh, electromagnetic energy, uh, especially for visible spectrum, but the the reverse is the the white color is because uh, the object uh, reflected or redirected all uh, energy of the uh, electromagnetic wave, so that will appears in the dark and blue. Yeah, I know you understand why uh, sky appears as the blue. Why color? Why cloud appears as a white color? Uh, there's also a similar uh, concept on the uh, dark uh, uh, object, yeah, and also uh, white uh, bright object. So you you can uh, at least you can you can understand now. Okay. Uh, the second interaction is the absorption. So first is uh, uh, scattering and then absorption. So from the word you can uh, imagine what is the the, the, the the interaction in this uh, kind of absorption. Absorb, absorb mean uh, the energy will uh, use by the object. Yeah? So absorption is the other main mechanism at uh, work when Electromagnetic radiation interact with the atmosphere, and it contrasts to scattering. This phenomena causes a molecule in the atmosphere to absorb energy at various wavelengths. Uh, in atmosphere, there is some layer and there is some uh, uh, molecule like ozone, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. These uh, are the three main atmospheric constituents which absorb radiation. Yeah? So that's why ozone is very important. You understand why ozone is very important. Ozone layer is very important for human because this layer can observe uh, and sometimes reflect it, the uh, uh, short uh, wavelength like ultraviolet. Yeah, uh, without this layer, so uh, ultraviolet uh, wavelength or energy will pass through the atmosphere and yeah, uh, we can uh, uh, to say uh, penetrate until the earth surfaces. 
So that's why ozone is very important because this characteristic, they absorb uh, almost uh, all energy. Uh, okay, sorry. And then the uh, next, <coughs> okay, this is a sim. Uh, the target uh, uh, interaction between the uh, object in Earth's surface with the uh, electromagnetic wave spectrum, there's the absorption also and then transmission and reflection. So uh, absorption is a similar uh, way with uh, object in the atmosphere, but transmission and reflection is uh, uh, the key uh, how the energy will uh, record by the sensor. So we will we'll explain one by one. So, okay. Uh, this is the key uh, uh, for the uh, ocean or for the color. Yeah? The object appear as the color they, they most uh, reflect. So uh, when you see the, uh, to say the water, for example, uh, as a green, yeah, by your eyes, yeah, uh, as a green uh, color, that's mean uh, most energy uh, reflect, reflected is from the green wavelength. If you see the water color is the red, so that means that's the the particle that uh, uh, make a, a dominant reflection on the red uh, wavelength. So uh, its object as uh, to say uh, a portion of the uh, spectrum on the reflection. That's that's why the uh, we can uh, uh, to say use the a visible spectrum to identify the or make identification for the object based on the this interaction also. Uh, this is a how uh, the illustration how the the target interaction will influence the uh, to say the uh, interpretation by the sensor yeah, because of the amount of the signal signal that uh, received by the sensor. First, if uh, there is the absorption, almost uh, uh, no uh, signal uh, reflecting to the, the sensor, yeah, because uh, they use the wavelength for the uh, for the some mechanism in the internal object. So, the the, the example of the absorption is how the leaf or the vegetation absorb the red wavelength for the uh, photosynthesis and uh, how to say reflecting the red uh, color or red uh, wavelength because uh, leaf or uh, vegetation doesn't use the uh, red wavelength for the photosynthesis. Oh, sorry, green uh, energy for the uh, photosynthesis. That's that's why vegetation uh, uh, commonly uh, appear as the green color. You can see that uh, if the for the health uh, healthy uh, vegetation that's appear as a green color because uh, they are uh, reflecting uh, the maximum color of the uh, green. They they didn't use a green uh, wavelength. Yeah? They use the blue wavelength and the green uh, red wavelength. Sorry for photosynthesis. I think you can uh, you I think you understand well more about the photosynthesis how uh, the or uh, uh, sun radiation, especially red color and blue color used on this uh, mechanism. And then the transmission. So transmission means when the uh, electromagnetic spectrum pass through the object, yeah, because the wavelength is long, longer than the size of the uh, particle. This is an example that, for example, microwave uh, wavelength, uh, will they will pass through uh, pass through the the leaf or the or the vegetation because uh, the microwave uh, wavelength uh, as you can see uh, before that the the size is from one millimeter to the one hundred meter. You can imagine that the leaf uh, the leaf actually the 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 width of leaf actually is less than uh, millimeter. Yeah. Yes, in some cases there is uh, more than one millimeter, but for microwave this will pass through. 
Yeah, pass through the, the, the way. And the reflection is, as I already mentioned before, when the wavelength is shorter than uh, the object size, and they doesn't use that or they observe the the okay. they will reflect reflecting the the energy. So there are already example that uh, uh, the green yeah green wavelength about the five hundred millimeter they uh, then they they didn't use the green wavelength and they also uh, uh, the, the 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 wavelength so much much uh, uh, shorter uh, shorter than the size of the lid. They will, uh, to say, uh, reflecting the green energy or green uh, spectrum. So, uh, however, there is the, uh, how to say, uh, uh, the uh, the influence of the 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 texture of the surface for the amount of the reflection also. So in the reflection, we uh, uh, we uh, divide the uh, uh, two uh, type, yeah, a specular or a mirror-like uh, reflection. So this happen when uh, almost all energy is uh, directed away from the surface in single direction. Yeah, this is like in the mirror. You can see that uh, the Snellius, uh, Snellius uh, law, yeah? uh, when the uh, surface is uh, smooth, like like road, for example, yeah, like this, uh, like uh, um, mirror, or something like that. Yeah? They will, uh, uh, to say, uh, uh, directed uh, all uh, energy in the one direction. So they we uh, the, the sensor will get the maximum uh, signal on this uh, 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 reflection because they will get uh, this is a specular we, can, we we call it specular and then uh, it's uh, the second one is diffuse and diffuse means the uh, too many direction yeah the reflection is away to the too many uh, uh, direction yeah so uh, we can see that uh, example in this uh, vegetation. So when the uh, sun radiation penetrate the leaves because the the surface of is not smooth enough, they will uh, how to say uh, directed to some uh, direction. Yeah. So this is the the diffuse uh, direction. Okay. Uh, this the 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 interaction between the uh, electromagnetic uh, wave or energy with the target is uh is clear enough or do you have a question or com comment for this uh, uh, slide? Hello, maybe Udayana student. If you have any question, you can. Uh, yeah. Any questions? So please, we still have uh, 16 minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I don't, I'm not sure this is too difficult or uh, you can uh, understand what I explained. Okay, if no, uh, if not, I will uh, continue. So uh, now we uh, continue to the the consequence of the type of the the different of the interaction to the uh, to the uh, sensor. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the just a sample how the uh, spectral respond from the uh, object will be used as the uh to say the fingerprint yeah fingerprint uh for to identification for each uh, object 
for example, we can see from the figure, this is the, the leaves. So leaves actually the, uh, to say the a chemical compound uh, consists there, yeah, exists there that we call uh, chlorophyll, yeah. So the chlorophyll uh, strongly absorb the radiation in the red and blue wavelength, as I, I mentioned before, and reflect the green wavelength. So uh, the primary, uh, uh, to see, we can see the, the primary visible and infrared when they penetrate the the the, to see the vegetation or leaf. So blue and red will absorb maximally. Yeah? But uh, green and infrared will reflect uh, dead yet because there's uh, no use for green and infrared wavelength. So this is in the leaves, uh, 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 to say mechanism yet. That's why uh, the sensor will use the green color, uh, the ratio between green, red, and blue, and sometimes uh, infrared, to identify the difference between vegetation and other vegetation, because it's very uh, clear there. This is the, 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 the reason why uh, many, uh, uh, to say the index vegetation, use uh, these uh, four bands, yeah? four, four color, I mean, four, four, yeah, to easy understand four color, blue, green, red, and infrared, because there's the special response, the spectral response, uh, by this uh, uh, wavelength. Then we move to the the the, the extreme uh, example, other example, water. Eh? So uh, on the water, longer wavelength are visible, like red, uh, green, yeah, uh, infrared especially, near infrared, yeah, is uh, absorbed uh, more by the water, yeah. Then the shorter uh, visible were playing like a blue and green. So that's why uh, the if the, uh, the uh, fuel water, I mean, uh, there's no contamination. Uh, the ocean water, for example, will uh, looks uh, blue, or sometimes uh, mix between blue and green, yeah, because uh, the stronger stronger uh, reflectance at this uh, shorter were playing blue and green. Uh, Will uh, and darker if you are red or near the prado wavelength. Yeah, so this is the 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 reason why uh, sea water or ocean looks uh, uh, mostly blue, blue color. So this uh, the uh, to see uh, different behavior of uh, different objects will produce the different spectral response. Yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, the the way how uh, scientists use uh, uh, this uh, ratio between bands to identify the object. So finally, we uh, can how to say uh, make a graph to for uh, its uh, wavelength for the vegetation and water. As you can see on the graph, the red and blue color. Is a different uh, peaks and also the different, uh, let's say, uh, 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 peak and uh, fairly, yeah, you can see that the, the green one is to support vegetation. Uh, the first uh, peak of the uh, line is on the green, yeah, the maximum the green, and uh, the will uh, slow down on the red, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, red color until the uh, infrared, uh, uh, near infrared. But in near infrared, they will max increasing again the reflectant. So this is the, the particle is reflectant in amount of uh, percent because the ratio between, uh, to say, uh, uh, energy with uh, uh, come and out, yeah. And then the water, you can see that. Uh, there is the uh, 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 much uh, absorption on the red color. We're playing with uh, 700 nanometer or 0 0.7 micrometer until the uh, near infrared. So that means uh, we can uh, uh, see the, the, the dominant color uh, as a, uh, 
to say uh, to interpret the ocean water like uh, blue yeah discusses from the blue until green and then red will this is the the uh the 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 type of the or the line uh we call it the spectral response for object so all object has different type of line so that's that's why uh it's a uh, uh, used to uh poly identification using by the uh characteristic of the spectral response okay i think that's uh uh the basic of the uh, spectral response and then uh based on the that wavelength uh, spectral response so uh they they <coughs> Uh, develop the the sensor yeah, to accommodate uh, this uh, uh, behavior of the wavelength. There are the, the three uh, typical uh, sensors. First is the optical sensors. So optical sensors is uh, based on the visible wavelength. I think construct by the visible uh, wavelength characteristic. Yeah, this is observing the reflection of sunlight or the Earth's radiation or any color. Yeah. Any color that uh, can be uh, maybe sourced from the sunlight or the uh, uh, artificial light or uh, and other uh, source, uh, as long as they uh, uh, produce the uh, visible wavelength from the red, green, blue, yeah. And then uh, the 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 second one is the active microwave sensor. So this uh, sensor is transmitting to the target. And receiving the reflecting microwave from the target also, so because the the active mean, uh, the sensor produces the signal by itself by sensor itself, uh, by internal uh, platform, and then uh, transmitting and receiving in one platform. So this sensor uh, transmit uh, to say uh, uh, use the amount of the the energy yeah. Uh, uh, and used for the specific purpose like uh, 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 clouds and then uh, uh, typhoon yeah yeah you do I think now Japan uh, uh, in the beginning uh, professor sensei explained about the typhoon uh, typhoon one of the uh, phenomena that uh, measured by the uh, active sensor using the uh, radar yeah uh, then we can uh, capture about the 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 uh, the clouds pattern and uh, associate with the wind pattern and then the 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 third one is the passive microwave sensor so passive mean uh, uh, the reflective microwave from the target just use the uh, uh, how to say the source from the target only yeah? so not uh, uh, transmitting by the sensor but uh, observed by the uh, reflect, uh, signal reflected by the target. So this also can be used uh, for the weather condition like uh, uh, precipitation or rain yeah, in the night time because they can uh, pass the uh, cloud in this area. So this is the typical sensor. So, what is the uh, advantages or disadvantages of between the passive and active sensor uh, or sensing? You can see that uh, from the source aspect and also from the uh, energy aspect and also from the uh, uh, to say the uh, time aspect. For, from the uh, sensor aspect, uh, passive sensor can only by use the detect energy when uh, naturally occurring energy is available. Yeah, like uh, uh, to say uh, temperature that uh, uh, to say re uh, reflected by the uh, object or ocean and water and, and the land. Uh, the thermal radiation by the body also, like our body has a thermal radiation they can uh, capture by the passive sensor like a uh, thermal infrared something like that. And then in terms of reflected energy, uh, for the passive sensor only occurring during the time when the sun is illuminating the earth or when the uh, object illuminating the, the, the oh, sorry, when the object uh, 
uh, release the the heat. Yeah, this is the the the, the passive sensor. And there is no reflected energy available from the sun at night. So this is the disadvantage of the passive sensor, especially in the night time. So this is the summaries. And for the active sensor, so the ability to obtain measurement anytime, regardless of the time of day or season, because the source of uh, the energy is uh, carrying by the platform, by the instrument itself. So it's not depend on the sun, yeah. Just uh, can uh, use anytime. So the in term of the wavelength that are not sufficiently provided by the sun, yeah. Use the uh, cyclic microwaves or to better control uh, to the way of target is dominant. So the this disadvantage is uh, the active system require the generation of a very large amount of energy because they carrying the energy by uh, the uh, system itself. Yeah? So need some uh, source of energy here. So the, for example, for the, the size of the polymer, volume of course will more larger and more the mass also will more, uh, more heavy because compared to passive sensor because they bring the source of energy there. So this is the, uh, uh, summaries of the active uh, demand sensing or the active sensor. So this is typical the active sensor radar. Yeah, use the radio detection and ranging. So they this one of the type of the sensor that uh, used to uh, measure the uh, typhoon. Yeah, and also use the other uh, uh, microwave sensor. So this is the radar sensor. Uh, used for the what to say uh, identify identify the object in the airport and uh, uh, navigation is many many kind because they will produce the signal and if they uh, the signal uh, reflected by the object so uh, the uh, to say they, they we can they can be used for the uh, anal, uh, identify the object itself whether the 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 uh, aircraft or yeah, other other uh, object appear on this. So this is the weather observation. Okay, this is very, uh, uh, one of the uh, to say uh, atmospheric uh, anomaly like a typhoon. Yeah? This is the typhoon. So uh, this is the uh, how to say. Uh, the combination between passive and active sensor in the one platform. Uh, if I think some of you maybe have this uh, instrument. This is camera. So camera with the uh, blitz or blight, uh, lights, uh, additional lights, they can be used to capture image in the night time. This means the, 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 the active uh, uh, sensing, yeah? But camera also can be used to capture in the daytime uh, they depend on the sun uh, energy. They 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 can uh, 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 to say operate as the passive uh, sensing. So this is uh, the 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 advantages of the camera with the two sensor. Yeah. So we can use nighttime and also daytime with plus. Man, sorry, not blitz plus. Yeah, you can you say the plus. Okay. Until then. Uh, until uh, that slide is very any question or comment type of sensor yeah? before we move to the characteristic of the satellite data as the main of the uh, uh, remote sensing for observation at observation uh, excuse me i interrupt yes i see uh, it's time uh, 10 40 maybe will you continue or you will will you have a what is it? A break? Uh okay. I think we can break okay. five or ten minutes. Uh, actually, we no... set up twenty minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. But before that, is any question or comment from student? Uh, I don't know. This. I hope you are not sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Still more. Maybe would I ask student, please? Maybe any question or comment?
Okay, Tariko, not yet. Okay, so I assume you understand all, yeah. Maybe Japanese student, if you have any question, anything, yeah, because this, maybe this uh, subject is not in your uh, area, in your major, yeah. Yeah, from from Toriko uh, she said that there's no question. <laughs> okay. okay, if no question, so we can uh continue to break. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll. Uh, we we'll start oh. around eleven, one minute or something like that. Eleven. Okay. Yeah, eleven or maybe ten o'clock. Yeah, at Bali time. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. See you later. Okay. Okay, mm. maybe we can start. Okay. So many students, so many students, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, we continue the the class today. So uh, next, I uh, will uh, try to explain about the the characteristic of the satellite data and also the and its application yeah, in several aspect. So. Uh, student, I think uh, almost of you now have a, a mobile phone, yes, mobile phone with the uh, very high uh, resolution on the camera resolution, yeah. I uh, we it's uh, to say uh, it's called like a. Uh, it's a megapixel, like something like that, and then 32 megapixel and so on. Uh, the, the increasing of the uh, number of the megapixel will increasing also the quality of the image. That's mean uh, uh, one of the uh, resolution is like spatial resolution. That's, that's called spatial resolution. So in satellite data also similar like that, yeah. There is the uh, fundamental term on, on the satellite remote sensing data that we need to understand and to uh, to, to ex explore. Yeah? Uh, first is the a spatial resolution because there's four type of resolution is spatial resolution. And then the second one is spectral resolution, uh, temporal resolution, and also radiometric resolution. Actually, uh, when we decide to select the satellite data, there is uh, many aspects to be considered, yeah? uh, including the, the price of the data, because uh, there's also, uh, to say, uh, uh, free access data and also uh, we need to pay the data. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the prices depend on the this character of the data, the uh, uh, resolution. So we will uh, describe one by one. Let's start from the uh, spatial resolution. So this uh, image or this figure show the how uh, relation between the spatial resolution and the coverage area of the each uh, line and also the typical of the orbit of the sun. So for the orbit, uh, yeah, we you can see that uh, uh, Earth as one orbit, natural orbit. Yeah, is we call moon. 
moon so satellite data also uh work uh what to say uh orbit uh, thing the the cycling the earth uh in one orbit so uh in uh, this orbit will uh determined by the altitude and also by the uh, serial uh to say serial uh, registration yeah i think uh, each country has the regulation of for this uh, uh where uh, they can uh, place the uh, sensor and satellite in the in the space so this is international regulation also so uh one uh, complete orbit that's mean uh one cycle uh, and uh, sensor can uh, acquire the the uh, produce the image for all uh, uh, one cycle uh, of uh, Earth's surface condition. So you can see that the 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 line orbit is the this is the black line, and the uh, yellow the shadow uh, yellow shadow uh, area uh, means the uh, in the ground uh, uh, area, yeah, with the typically with uh, uh, size by the uh, uh, SWAT. SWAT means the wide of the how far, uh, uh, how wide uh, the the line in the ground that uh, such sensor can capture the image. And in the SWAT area, there is the scene, yeah. Uh, one scene mean the uh, size of the uh, one uh, image. So when we download it, when we get the when we try to get the satellite data, so we can uh, we will order scene by scene. I mean one by one uh, image. So one image will consist of uh, uh, picture of the or Im uh, image of the one uh, area or one region. Uh, even in one province, depend on the uh, resolution. So in one image, there is the a pixel, like uh, I as already explained before, there's megapixel. Like some, megapixel mean one million pixel in one image. Uh, of, that's mean more precise and more detail, detailed data. So if, if uh, 32 megapixel, that's mean 32 million pixel in one image. So, uh, if we compare with the uh, two megapixel or each megapixel, of course, a uh, thirty-two megapixel will more clear, will more uh, high quality compared to the uh, because there is a uh, more precise and more detail that construct the image. In this uh, satellite data, also similar uh, uh, to say uh, term terminology like that. So there, there is the uh, pixel or we and this size of pixel it's called like a uh, spatial resolution for example uh, some previous image i show you uh, from the landsat satellite data uh, it has a uh, 30 meter time 30 meter so that mean one uh, pixel is 30 meter uh, time 30 meter so anything object in larger uh, than 30 meter will uh the uh, what to say will distinguish clearly but uh object is uh the size object in, uh, lower than uh, smaller than uh, 30 meter will uh what to say a uh, little bit uh, uh blue because the 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 pixel only 30 meter so in this uh, area the sweat weights uh, is one hundred uh, 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 five kilometer means one image uh, copper area coverage area is uh, one uh, hundred eighty five uh, kilometer time one hundred uh, eighty uh, five kilometer yeah almost uh, for uh, in our case Bali Island will cover almost cover by this image one image uh, if Japan maybe uh, needs uh, 100 images for cover all uh, whole area because the the size from the south to the north I think more than uh, several thousand kilometers. 
So this is a uh, has a scene from a satellite. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the spatial resolution is the uh, to say uh, will uh, indicating the how the Earth surface area covered by the pixel. So this is the the definition. And then uh, the large area covered by a pixel means a low spatial resolution and vice versa. So when uh, we say uh, high resolution of camera, for example, 32 megapixel, we uh, state as a high resolution, not resolution. Uh, the size is uh, uh, the smaller the size than the high resolution. In satellite, that is sensor also uh, similar. So when uh, you heard about the sat a high resolution, that's mean a more uh, increase the quality of uh, increase the resolution and increase the quality, at least in in uh, term of spatial. So this is the spatial resolution. How we can uh, understand the difference? So I, I try to uh, take uh, one example. So this is a uh the same picture same uh, uh scene uh, but different resolution from half meter until 20 meters you can see the difference when the half meter yeah almost anything uh, yeah. in the ground can uh, easy to uh, interpret yeah we can easily recognize which uh, the vegetation uh, root which is the roof uh, and uh, maybe a car also is it, uh, is, there's the car also here so this uh, because the size of object is almost larger than 0 0.5 meter that means will uh, easy to uh, recognize in the data then uh, the resolution get lower uh, to one meter uh, there is uh, some uh, how to say uh, the quality is uh, reduced. Uh, there is some uh, information will uh, mix, but still recognized because uh, the target is uh, mostly the size is more than one meter. But when we try to uh, use the two uh, meter resolution, uh, this is all, all, almost changed. Yeah, the, there is no no uh, difference between car, for example, and other spot. Like in this uh, point, there's car, but actually it is difficult to recognize because the size of car is almost two meter also, two meter square. This will be, uh, make it a, a little difficult. And then we get the more lower resolution, five meters, almost all object uh, uh, smaller than five meters will uh, uh, difficult to, 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 to interpret. Yeah. To recognize and 10 meters like this 10 meter and 20 meter and 80 meter like this so 80 meter almost uh, no uh, the difference between its pixel because one pixel like this the uh, the color of uh, the dark uh, uh, gray uh, or, or to say representing for many objects there in this area because the size of pixel so uh, the lower uh, uh, resolution means the uh, the smaller number of the pixel like this. You can see that uh, in zero point five, you can calculate calculate the how many pixel there. There's too many pixel. Yeah, too many pixel, but still we can calculate by the uh, uh, software. But in eighty meters, you can see that there is uh, only uh, how to uh, sixteen. Uh, in, uh, pixel. So uh, that's the the difference between the uh, high resolution zero point five meter to the low resolution eighty meter. So this is the the, the easy to to see what is spatial resolution and what is the difference between uh, each uh, type. Okay, uh, this is spatial resolution. Oh, uh, see, it is a uh, image from uh, one area, but different uh, satellite data with uh, different resolution. 
So the first one is the Landsat with 30 meter. Uh, you can see there's uh, still a mix between uh, many uh, objects. Yeah. When we zoom in and we, we observe use the Japan satellite or Aster, 15 meter, almost uh, more clear. Yeah, more clear and uh, uh, we can uh, easily different between uh, which uh, river, uh, dam and which uh, is a uh, uh, high area, mountain vegetation, and dense vegetation. And so on. But when we use the sports data from friends with 5 meter resolution, we even can uh, to say recognize the road like this and the square of the uh, to say a green area or the park area here. <clears throat> so this is the different. So which one do you like to do, uh, use? But uh, it depends on your purpose because uh, the consequence is the number of images also. When you use uh, spot image or high resolution, you need more images, not more image because the coverage is lower usually. Uh, I mean, the, the size of image will uh, more narrow. Uh, for example, Landsat, we can observe almost one of the uh, central Japa in one image like this. Uh, sorry, not one image, uh, separate, maybe several images. Yeah. But uh, for uh, Aster, we need more images. And for Sport, maybe more more images. More, more images. Yeah. This is the spatial resolution. And then the spectral resolution, uh, spectral mean uh, spectrum. Uh, so you already see the uh, electromagnetic spectrum before. So the number of uh, color, for example, uh, the number of the uh, region, uh, microwave, uh, and then uh, infrared, visible, uh, ultraviolet, uh, X-ray, and gamma ray. So. The spectral resolution mean is the ability to uh, resolve the spectral features and bends into their spirits, uh, spirit uh, components. So more number of band in the specified bandwidth means higher spectral resolution and vice versa. So when the image uh, fully with color like a rainbow color, that means the high spectral resolution. But if the color only, uh, let's say, uh, uh, dark and white, that's mean the low resolution. Uh, and also, uh, also uh, composed by the uh, tree band that get blue, uh, this more, uh, to say, lower compared to the uh, all color in one, one image, I mean. So this is the spectral resolution. So next is a temporal resolution. So uh, temporal resolution actually is uh, uh, how uh, variance yeah? uh, in uh, to observe the one location, it's same location. So the frequency at which images are recorded uh, in specific person of the earth. And then the more frequently uh, captured, the better uh, resolution, temporal resolution. So you can see from the figure, uh, this is the one of the sample, uh, how the one uh, satellite orbiting the Earth. And then uh, uh, how many hours or how many days they will back to the orbit in same location like in the uh, right one. So return to the same spot. Uh, so how many days, how many hours? That's mean the uh, temporal resolution. Sometimes uh, satellite need uh, uh, hoursly, one hour, like a geostationary satellite, like a weather satellite. So they can measure the uh, con uh, atmospheric condition every hours, rain, uh, humidity, uh, cloud and something like that. So Japan has, uh, I think you familiar with uh, Himawari satellite data that produce about information about the uh, weather in Japan, including the typhoon and something. So that's why also typhoon can uh, track every, almost every minute, yeah? 
so they are uh, the line and the 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 how to say the the pattern of the uh, typhoon and uh, uh, they can uh how to say uh uh visualize and detected uh almost every minute that's because the satellite can uh the temporal resolution of the satellite use in that uh, uh observation is very high uh, the Himawari it's uh, uh, has, uh by the Japanese agencies uh, the uh, is the, the how to say has the highest uh, temporal resolution recently yeah they observed uh, they observed the uh, atmospheric condition in uh, same spot every 10 minutes so every 10 minutes that's mean uh, every 10 minutes they will uh, update this condition rain and other kidding and this is himawari satellite so uh, but sometimes also they, they they the satellite uh, don't doesn't need a uh, 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 frequency but uh, need a higher uh, spatial resolution then the the uh, return every uh, 16 days for example like landsat 16 days uh, and then pulsar is uh, 40 days alos alos japanese alos satellite is every 40 days 42 days sorry 42 days uh, repetition so this is the temporal uh, resolution which is better of course the highest resolution is better but there's also some consequence of that because uh, the higher resolution need uh, need the uh, high latitude uh, higher uh, altitude that's mean the uh, will uh, produce the low uh, uh, uh to say spatial resolution uh, okay so this is the consequence like a camera uh, when we you uh, use uh how to say uh, uh very uh, close to the target uh you can do very uh good uh solutions spatial resolution, but you cannot you cannot capture in wide area for uh uh say a high temporal resolution you need to uh, more distance to capture more uh, uh, frequent tip. yeah this is the temporal resolution so uh, this is uh, the example how we can uh, uh, track the, the 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 next uh, data yeah? uh, this is the example of the 16 days the landsat and uh, 11 days is the sentinel 2 data so, uh, Landsat data is a uh, sixteen days, uh, one image in sixteen days. So that's mean if we uh, try to get uh, first data in July second, July, so we will get next uh, data in same area. For example, if we want to observe the agriculture in Japan or in Indonesia, uh, in uh, one area. So you need the uh, uh, UAPU use Landsat data. You will get uh, three data in one month. Is that enough? Yes, depend on your your purposes. Yeah, is that enough? Uh, but if you use Sentinel two data, we you will get a uh, five data set. Uh, sorry, four data set because they repeat uh, it's uh, eleven days. So we will get from July first, then July, uh, July twelfth until August three, almost one month. But you will get uh, a four data, and uh, Landsat you will get a six, a three data. That's different. So if you so imagine uh, Himawari it's Himawari it's uh, by Japanese uh, agency, the repetition is ten minutes. So you will have uh, so many data one month. Uh, 10 minutes or so 20 po uh, one hour you will get six data one day we will uh, almost uh, 150 data in one day in 30 day you will uh, time multiply 30 so, so many data but uh, different resolution of course so spatial resolution so this is the uh, definition of uh, temporal resolution Okay, uh, and then the uh, radiometric uh, resolution, the number four. 
So this is a more likely a sensitivity of the sensor, yeah. So and they will uh, uh, to see uh, 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 formula formulating this uh, geometric resolution in bit. So two bit, uh, uh, four four bit, uh, six bit, uh, eight bit, or something like that. Yeah, this is the the number comp uh, the 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 number of the uh, composition of the uh, formulation yeah like uh, uh two bit there's only uh four gradation or something like that so sensitivity of the sensor of the to, ma to the magnitude of the received electromagnetic energy determine the radiometric lessons finer the resol radiometric resolution of a sensor if it's more sensitive in detecting small differences in reflected or emitted energy. So uh, this is uh, the 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 how to say a uh, poor uh, a typical of the the fundamental of the uh, satellite remote sensing. Uh, beside this, there is uh, there are many uh, parameter uh, like. Uh, uh, to say the the website, the access, the the price, and also the the license the license, and so many, and also the the ability of the software and something that so you can uh, uh, uh to say uh, select the data depend on your purposes and depend on your ability, depend on your uh, uh, resources yeah how to analyze and how to uh, processing the data. So uh, this is some known uh, satellites uh, from the NOAA. This is by U.S. government. And then uh, Quest and Modis also by U.S. This is Landsat spot with the resolution, different resolution. Yeah, this is a, um, almost one kilometer and then 700 meters. Modis is this uh, three resolution, 250, 500, uh, 1,000. And then Landsat, about 30 to 60 spot, Iconos and QuickBot, like that. So you can uh, explore more about this on the website. This is very common, uh, very, uh, to say, uh, uh, so, so many study using uh, this uh, data. So you can, uh, uh, to say, explore more about this. So I just uh, saw the example of how the uh, uh, the spatial resolution will influence the the size of the image or the SWAT area. This is example of the HP uh, APHRR. This is for the actually for the uh, atmospheric in the ocean, but also can capture some information from land. So the one image is very uh, large scene. Yeah, can capture uh, thousand to thousand uh, kilometers. And uh, usually used for the global, uh, global uh, analysis, yeah, because they must uh, composite or uh, mosaic uh, data for global uh, condition. It consists of many uh, data, so it's more complex or more difficult uh, algorithm to do that. So this is the the uh, APSRR uh, by the NASA. Uh, this is an uh, example of the uh, how the ocean color and also the land condition. So this is the spot, two point five uh, meter. So how the Washington, very clear, uh, by the satellite data. Yeah, you can see that there is a, a road and building and so, uh, easy to recognize. Uh, it's part of area because the resolution is 2.5 meter, but the size is only uh, Washington. Only the scale is very narrow. Yeah? Only this uh, area cannot be uh, used uh, for the global uh, scale. It's typical because too many images. This is for 2.5 uh, meter spot. Is uh, how to say high resolution satellite. This is a quick but 0.6 meter, even more uh, high resolution. Just uh, form a like this, yeah, to uh, easy to 
recognize the the rock to the how to say the the pattern of the uh, uh, how to say volcano like this uh, but uh, the size is very small yeah only uh, pick of the volcano because quick but resolution is 0 0.6 meter this is iconos 4 meter so uh, 4 meter is still uh, to say good enough to use uh, identify for example the the river the crop area to the road and the vegetation because four method is uh, uh to say um, uh, also uh, qualify as a high resolution okay uh, this is iconos one meter so you can clearly see the people on in the stadium eh? this is the people uh, sit in the stadium uh, and the car because uh, the shadow of the car also so this is super. so of course you can also identify the uh, the vegetation is because this is the panchromatic so panchromatic mean uh, the combine the spectrum to be one uh, band one spectrum so they will appear as the uh, white and black and white only yeah. so you can see that like this this is one meter so you can understand how other maybe other country can understand the situation in other country <laughs> like uh, america us can easy to understand what happened in the uh, for example in the uh, eastern area yeah because they, they they have a satellite data they can measure every time they want so this is also used for the military uh, purposes. So this is a quick butt also by uh, 60 centimeter. So you can easily recognize the car, the vegetation and other building and very clear. So this is the ocean, this is the uh, port. So you, yeah, uh, if they have series data, so you can understand. So this one, um, many, many movie uh, use satellite data is very good, uh, good uh, to say good illustration how they use uh, that uh, image for military, for the agency or something like this. You can like, uh, yeah, there's one movie by uh, actor by the Will Smith, something like that is uh, tracking the, the human by the satellite data is very, very hard to say, very uh, iconic movie and understand, easy to understand how technology is satellite data is very, very powerful to uh, uh, that uh, purpose. Yeah. This is quick bird. And okay, I think this is uh, uh, just an uh, example of uh, uh, image with different resolution and different purposes. So no, you can uh, understand uh, which uh, what to say. I hope you can 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 uh, uh, distinguish uh, which uh, data is uh, what to say uh, uh, match with uh, the your study, for example, for your purpose, and maybe you can now have an idea how uh, will you develop your uh, research by uh, by uh, 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 satellite uh, data and of course you need to uh, explore more and study more about the the uh, this, uh, uh, the aspect of satellite data so this is the any question or comment until this You can uh, write on the chat, yeah, chat box, yeah. If you feel difficult to use microphone, you can use chat. Diana student, do you have any question?
Oh, okay. I hope you have a, a comment, yeah? Uh, Hello. Please. Uh... Uh, Cho Sang, maybe. <laughs> Cho Sang, do you have some question, Cho Sang? So, once, yeah. Justin Filippo, they are not sure. No, oh, sir. Okay. Okay. You can continue. No question. Okay. Uh... Yeah, let's continue. Now this is the now we move to the the application, yeah, remote sensing application. So and this is also will be uh, part of your task. Please, uh, if you have any question, please, please, uh, uh, what to say, uh, raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, remote sensing application actually is not uh, new for for. For us, for the Sudan also, because uh, as we uh, explained before, we use uh, every day. Uh, we use every day your your eyes, your uh, nose, your hair, your your uh, walk uh, every day to grab information, and you analyze by your brain and you make decision. But in term in this uh, uh, class. So I will try to explain some example uh, for land, ocean, and atmosphere. Yeah. So for lands, uh, usually remote sensing technique is uh, is very uh, powerful for the mining. Yeah. Mining and try uh, to analyze the surface condition before they go to the field. Yeah. To identify the rock mineral. Then um, develop all the land use, land cover, uh, vegetation, and digital elevation model. So, uh, how you know uh, the altitude of the area uh, and develop to the snow and ice uh, observation for the polar region. Uh, yeah, I, for, for example, in Hokkaido, in Japan, I, I knew some friend uh, very intensively uh, study about the snow and ice cover in Hokkaido. Uh, so this uh, they use the uh, satellite radar. And for the, in Osaka, in Chiba, in Tokyo, they many remote sensing use for the uh, agriculture, rice crop and many, and also for the uh, uh, environment uh, condition. Yeah. Uh, for social, there is the urban growth. Uh, there is also uh, now is uh, for the uh, disaster, yeah, <coughs> uh, identification and also prediction and mitigation. Uh, for the ocean, the uh, since uh, remote sensing uh, technique uh, introduced, there's uh, some uh, product now by the. Uh, remote sensing approach like ocean color, uh, sea surface temperature, ocean wind, ocean current. Now, uh, bathymetry also using the altimeter and uh, uh, fishing ground, uh, fish migration. Uh, even now, uh, will combine with the uh, fish migration. Uh, the connect connection between the uh, species in the ocean, yeah, uh, especially for the biodiversity. So, so many uh, application now combined with the uh, GIS or uh, 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 geographical system information, information system, and then for the atmosphere, yeah, one uh, uh, example I already explained about the how uh, Japanese government or, or NASA use this to uh, identify and trace the typhoon uh, typhoon and also uh, now is uh, climate change due to the uh, carbon dioxide matter uh, due to the uh, ozone and due to the uh, uh, heat yeah global warming so many <coughs> many uh, uh, study yeah we can say that almost every aspect now uh, can be uh, to say uh, approach by the remote sensing uh, technique. So I will show the some example. Uh, but before that, this is the, the domain of application. Uh, they already uh, established in 2000 by Jensen. Yeah? 
uh, actually remote sensing uh, uh, in, in that time already, but now this is so many, uh, almost all aspects. So remote sensing has a uh, contribute to the uh, physical uh, sciences, and then a uh, combination between remote sensing and GIS and cartography will uh, can uh, uh, contribute to the uh, biological sciences and also social sciences. But nowadays, remote sensing itself can contribute to all aspects, physical, biological, and social, uh, with or without uh, this geographical and cartographical survey. So this is the advance of the uh, uh, remote sensing uh, evolution. Yeah? So uh, this is, for example, how uh, in, in our uh, study in the ocean, how uh, the uh, remote sensing uh, domain uh, domain application yeah, uh, in terms of the temporal and spatial resolution. So from uh, this uh, chart, you can see that uh, what actually we need uh, to study, uh, uh, for example, let's say uh, marine traffic control, like uh, illegal fishing, yeah, uh, in so illegal fishing is one of the our uh, issue yeah, in Indonesia because Indonesian territorial is uh, very uh, large and also some is open uh, area uh, like uh, uh, Karimata Strait, South China Sea, and then uh, near Pacific and in, in the south is the South uh, Indian Ocean like that. So uh, many uh, uh, a country also want to to catch fish in its uh, uh, boundary area, but sometimes they uh, uh, to say uh, uh, go to the uh, Indonesian territorial, into the Indonesian territorial. So that's why the marine uh, uh, illegal fishing was one of the issue. And how we uh, decide the satellite data in this topic, for example, we need a high uh, temporal resolution. So the uh, the horizontal axis, so the uh, temporal resolution in this, yeah, the the <laughs> the number. So the, for example, the marine traffic control, we need at least uh, ten uh, power minus one. That's mean uh, less than one day. Yeah, less than than one day. Maybe in hours. In hours. And also, if we fit to the uh, spatial resolution, we need a high spatial resolution. So that means less than 10 meters. Uh, why? Because uh, marine traffic is uh, is not status. They will move the uh, dynamics. Yeah? So that's why we need uh, more frequent uh, data. To, to capture the, the the movement of the the vessel or or on or, or boot so uh, also high resolution because the size of the the uh, vessel on the boot but if we compare to the let's say uh, uh long term erosion so yeah or abrasion uh, erosion in, in 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 coastal area so we don't need the uh, high spatial, a uh, high temporal resolution, because the change of the the course is not in uh, daily scale. Yeah? But we can see the changes maybe uh, ten years or maybe twenty years or, or thirty years. That's that's why we don't need a high resolution temporal, but we still need high spatial resolution. We pit to the lab. To the vertical axis, this the uh, we need high spatial resolution because the scale of the the, the area of change is sometimes it's very small, it's very local, maybe in meters or maybe in one hundred meters, in ten meters something like. That. So we can decide by this point, but what what uh, if uh, we uh, to say. Uh, want to uh, measure the uh, ice copper, for example. So ice copper is uh, uh, quiet in the open area, if on the polar region, for example, on the mountain. mountain yeah. So you can 
select the medium resolution, maybe uh, from 10 to uh, 1 to 10 days, yeah. Because uh, ice will need time to change for, by the temperature, yeah. And uh, the resolution also because the coverage area is quite uh, large, so we, we don't need to very high resolution, spatial. Yeah, for example, let's say uh, ice copper in, in, in some uh, highly area or in the polar region, even yeah, so you we need to 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 what to say to uh, <coughs> uh, select the uh, optimum data. This is the optimum condition. Yeah. Of course, we you can you you can choose the high resolution, but the problem is the cost, the number of the data also. And the uh, ability in the in the, the source, so this is the the, the uh, to, uh, consider consideration that you have to to uh, put on the uh, research plan, for example, or something purposes. So this is the the remote sensing domain and application in the ocean uh, in the ocean study, because our major is those. So uh for the the, the uh let's say uh common uses of the remote sensing in the coastal environment. So this uh, from the uh, many resource uh, journal books and so I can summarize this the the list of uh, remote sensing application like uh, shoreline mapping and erosion analysis, fl uh, flood plain mapping. Yeah. Land cover and land cover change mapping, habitat mapping, wetland, summer regional planning also in the, the cost, water quality monitoring. Uh, I think uh, I heard that uh, Kaji is very strong in water quality, but I don't know whether they use remote sensing or not. But uh, water quality is also one of the uh, topic that is uh, remote sensing very uh, uh, massive. So coastal management and permitting oil and toxic spill uh, response planning, uh, navigation, drain and disposal site monitoring, like uh, now marine debris, and then marine debris, and then uh, marine litter, uh, or to say uh, oil spill and something like that. Uh, they now use a remote sensing technique. So there's also some product that already uh, done by the several agency agency that can be used directly yeah? and can be uh, used for analysis like a uh, digi digital application model or dem so land copper and copper change there's some product already that means uh, you can you just download don't need to process the data you just download the the, the data and you can analyze which is the uh, dense land copper which is the uh, very real then then copper and then vegetation type there's also some product from uh, some agency infrastructure sea surface temperature is promotion color you just uh, download then you can know where's the uh, warm water when's the cold water the sea surface hardness ocean color and chlorophyll shallow water bathymetry solar location so this is the the some product yeah, not data, but some product. Product means uh, uh, the subtle data already uh, analysis and uh, processing to be uh, some uh, result like this list here. Yeah. So this is the how uh, to say a uh, common data set. Yeah, common data set. <clears throat> So now we a little bit uh, focus on the, how actually the uh, what to say the aquatic remote sensing. Yeah? So aquatic mean we how we use this remote sensing for the uh, ocean or for the water. So how the interaction. So this is specific. So uh, uh, as you can. Uh, maybe you, you understand that uh, water has a uh, characteristic by the uh, what to say, uh, like penetration, penetrating, yeah, and then uh, there are also some uh, 
uh, uh, to say sus suspension there, uh, many uh, component there. Yeah? So uh, this uh, water or the fluid, uh, fluid will have a almost similar, uh, how to say, a similar uh, mechanism with the mechanism with the atmosphere, but the difference is uh, only because the density is different. Yeah, because there's the periods of density in the water and the periods of the uh, a different uh, component yeah, construct uh, of the water column, they will have a different interaction with the sunlight and with the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So the uh, the response of the color, uh, response of the water that produce the different color that can be observed by the sensor, uh, that's called the uh, ocean color. So if you can, you have uh, time, you can explore about the ocean color product by NASA, by NOAA, yeah? this uh, period of the ocean color that already, uh, uh, to say, are produced by the uh, scientists. Uh, <clears throat> so this figure, so how, uh, the illustration how the uh, to say uh, water body will respond the uh, sunlight that penetrating pass through the uh, water column. So actually, in the water uh, body, there's the uh, pairs of the uh, component like the uh, sedom. Sedom is the dissolved organic matter or color. This is the soft organic matter, and then uh, pH is the phytoplankton. This is very common. Maybe uh, in KGU also you study about this phytoplankton, and then also NAP. NAP is known uh, alga particle, and uh, uh, W is water itself. Uh, it's uh, uh, to oh yeah, so. Uh, this component will mix in the water body and will give the uh, special uh, uh, specific uh, response uh, for for the uh, sunlight penetration. Okay, this is the uh, uh, absorption and uh, how we get the uh, reflectance uh, reflectance or uh, signal by the water. So we, uh, the scientists make a formula that we call uh, reflectant of remote sensing or remote sensing reflectant by this uh, ratio. So C is the uh, speed of light and B is the uh, scattering. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, A is the absorption. So the ratio between the uh, scattering, scattering and uh, uh, amount of the absorption and the total uh, total of absorption and uh, scattering, uh, we call it the reflectant. So absorption will depend again. Absorption will depend on the what uh, material uh, consists uh, of the water body. For example, it's the sediment, a uh, phytoplankton, a uh, sedum, and uh, many uh, uh, and maybe other uh, artificial like now there's many microplastic also. Uh, and also many uh, uh, mineral that uh, sink from the land. This also will influence the, this uh, reflectant. So I will not deep uh, discuss about this. So I will so I will show the the, the typical of the how uh, remote sensing reflectance uh, by its uh, dominant uh, factor. For example, if in the water ocean what uh, sea water. Uh, Dominate, dominated by the uh, phytoplankton, or we call it phytoplankton bloom, with the how to say, uh, a photosynthesis uh, uh, capability. So we can get the spectral response like in this figure. So the vertical axis of the reflect, uh, reflectance and the horizontal axis of the uh, wavelength. So again, the spectral response will indicate that uh, for the phytoplankton, they mostly absorb the red and blue uh, wavelength, but uh, reflected the green uh, wavelength. 
That's why the pics of the reflectant will appear on the green wavelength and the seawater will appear also as a green color, not blue color, no blue, yeah, because uh, this um, phytoplankton blooming here. So you can see that uh, the the to say the 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 color of the from the figure. So what happened when the uh to say uh the phytoplankton uh concentration is different. So the amount of reflectance also will depend, but the characteristic of the uh, spectra response is uh, similar. So phytoplankton uh, will uh, almost uh, will always uh, pick on the green color, and will uh, reduce on the uh, blue and the red color, and also infrared near infrared. But the magnitude is different, or amplitude is different like this. Yeah, you can see that when the phytoplankton blooming, number one will has a highest uh, graph, highest line like this. But when the amount of phytoplankton is uh, low, like number four, they will almost uh, will similar with the uh, water. But still, there's the uh, reflectance from the green in the wavelength 550 uh, nanometer. So what we can uh, uh, conclude from this uh, slide that uh, for the uh, same object, for the one object like phytoplankton, will have a similar uh, graph spectral response, but the different uh, magnitude because of the different concentration. So that's why when we, when you find uh, later on, when you find the uh, uh, measurement uh, with uh, random object, for example, uh, when you do the the uh, to say do the uh, several uh, times uh, measurement, if you still have uh, one pattern like this, or maybe different pattern but uh, similar pattern, that's mean you observe the one object. Yeah, this is you mean that you uh, identify the same object. Yeah, this is the, 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 the that's also called the uh, fingerprint. Like, like in Indonesia, we call it sidik jari. Yeah? So uh, every uh, we know that every human has a uh, unique uh, fingerprints. In remote sensing, also like that, every object has a unique uh, spectral response. So no, uh, you understand. Okay, uh, that is the uh, uh, the use. Uh, uh, spectral uh, library. Yeah? No, later on we call uh, this is one of the spectral library for the one object. So you can get uh, uh, water, you can get uh, rock, uh, sand, uh, coral, and many, many objects. You can uh, collect the spectral library. This is very most uh, uh, difficult task for, for uh, research because we need to or to say to uh, to verify to validate the 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 result yeah with the field study okay but of course this is already validated by the scientists yeah it's, uh, yes. this is the 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 chlorophyll so uh, when the uh, we uh, we know that that pattern is uh, the representing for the chlorophyll. So then scientists can easily uh, to map the chlorophyll globally. Yeah, you chlorophyll A. You can see that this is the the one of example uh, chlorophyll A map uh, for a whole the uh, ocean or all ocean like this. So this is uh, they can make uh, make a color bar like this from the blue uh, from the violet to red. So red means the high concentration. Uh, the green is uh, medium concentration, normal concentration, yeah. But uh, violet is uh, very uh, low concentration for chlorophyll. Uh, don't don't uh, misinterpretation with the color, yeah, because 
this color is we can we can modify of course because this is from the the software but uh, if you wish if you, if you use natural color so it will appear like this so actually a uh, green uh, uh, is uh, identified group but for the high density will uh, appear as the red just to make a difference but the spectral response is uh, typical spectral response is similar sorry this is so why uh, uh, we need to do to uh, to say to measure this uh, daily because this chlorophyll a concentration uh, uh, used as a uh, to say a, a fishing ground uh, uh, area yeah, identification so ocean productivity actually based on this uh, chlorophyll concentration more higher chlorophyll concentration mean more higher uh, ocean productivity there so more fish and more industry and also more people actually uh, uh, has a beneficial for this condition so by this uh, data set uh, we, we uh, scientists can combine we can combine this data with the temperature wind and other uh, parameter that we can use to predict the fishing ground area each season so fishermen or people will more easy to recognize where's the the potential area for the fishing ground something like that. this is the one of parameter so this is chlorophyll from space so other uh, parameter that we can also uh, to say a uh, measure in the ocean is the sea surface temperature. So this is the basic uh, how uh, the thermal uh, uh, to say uh, radiation can observe or can uh, record by the sensor. Actually, uh, there is this uh, uh, detector there. So the to observe the uh, emission, uh, 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 it uh, uh, emission from the ocean. So then we'll uh, convert to the uh, uh, signal, yeah, and we'll interpret it by the image as a temperature. So this is some, uh, how to say, a uh, deep uh, explanation about this, but. Uh, I don't think we go that there here, but you 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 just now uh, can at least can get information how uh, satellite also can can measure the uh, temperature of the ocean, uh, especially sea surface temperature. Yeah? Okay, because the uh, planet. So this is the uh, uh, how the uh, other uh, parameter that. Uh, to say contribute to the the variability of the spectral, this is the suspended uh, sediment, alga, uh, sedum already, yeah. so uh, the detrital organic matter, uh, submerged uh, floating vegetation, and also oil. Uh, recently, many uh, oil uh, spill in the ocean, so they will contribute to the the breakdown. So this is the 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 to say the, the uh, example of the how uh, spectral response for each uh, uh, contributor uh, water like this uh, you can see that water will uh, much observe the wavelength from the uh, green to the red but uh, reflecting the uh, uh, blue uh, color the shorter wavelength so you can see that the, the higher uh, reflectance is from the blue color. And then the uh, phytoplankton already explained. And then sedum. Uh, sedum is uh, to say, uh, organic that uh, contribute by the uh, material from the land. Yeah? So you can uh, measure like uh, uh, using near infrared. And if there is suspended sediment, you can we can get the spectral response like this. So they will increase in the uh, wavelength of the red, yeah, until infrared, but very small in the blue color because they observe the blue color and reflecting the red color. That's why when the turbid area, turbid water, yeah, turbid, maybe uh, uh, understand with the kruh, yeah, kruhan, turbidity. 
So mostly the water will appear as a red or, or the brown, something like that, red color. So that because the reflectant is uh, uh, mostly uh, dominated by the suspended sediment. Okay, this is the uh, other uh, water bodies. So now we, uh, before we go to the application, uh, a sample of the application. So the, the appendages of the remote sensing for the aquatic environment uh, is the first, uh, yeah, in general, this the synoptic coverage for the wide area. And then uh, satellite provide the uh, uh, to see frequency uh, data, yeah, data set. Uh, then observation also uh, mostly can be done in all uh, area, uh, especially for the high risk uh, measurement. So this also can be accessed by remote sensing. Yeah, so many because uh, our our globe, our world, contain with almost seventy percent water. Yeah, and not all uh, area is uh, can be uh, uh, to say is explored yet by the um, the human. Still many uh, area that still need to explore and understand about the the, the to say the how this is will contribute to the other area. So this is the the, the appendage of the remote sensing for the for study in the water area. And but still there is limitation because uh, you can see that the uh, uh, temporal frequency of uh, satellite. Upper passes limit which process, yeah. For example, there is the uh, tides, yeah. Tide, and there's some uh, many uh, uh, material that we still don't know to uh, zinc to the ocean. Uh, the characteristic and also the, for example, migration uh, of harmful malga bloom special or something. Tide, especially, yeah. tide is uh, because there's the uh, separate uh, tides constituent from M2, K1, uh, S2, and means almost 14 constituent. Yeah. They will perish between one area to other area. So, of course, the satellite data will need to adjust to need to correct, correct, uh, correcting, yeah, uh, correction, need correction for this uh, data and reduce the impact of the tides. And then, uh, water is a, a dark target. This is also, a, a, as I saw before, that uh, in general, uh, water is a, is a dark target, uh, appear as a dark target in the, the satellite data. So that's mean uh, required satellite sensor with uh, appropriate sensitivity. Maybe uh, this needs some signal to noise or something like that. And also the atmosphere accounts uh, for uh, 80 to 90 percent of the light in the signal. So this is a correction is very important. And don't forget that water is very dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. Uh, it moves every time moves. So uh, actually, uh, satellite just capture uh, uh, following the orbit. Yeah, uh, and when the water uh, one uh, one cap one capture one dead will uh, captures the different condition because the water is uh, move every time. But this is also a, a consideration. And then clouds, yeah, for the optical sensor like camera, like our eyes, when the cloud uh, exists. We don't. We cannot see uh, the object behind that clouds. So this is the the very uh, basic. Yeah. So so please find the data that are very clear. The atmosphere. Yeah. If there's clouds, so you you need other uh, approach. For example, use serial uh, series data, um, and to try to identify and remove the clouds apex. So this is the limitation. Okay, until 
that is any question or comment or still no question until now i'm sorry i i i don't i tried to put a video but i feel that is very uh, happy yeah and um the size is quite big so i try to discover the, the slide but if you want to know the illustration or animation you can uh, go to the youtube you can find many uh, uh kind of the uh, remote sensing application on the uh, video yeah. oh, excuse me yes uh, is it possible if you set up directly to youtube because maybe some of students uh, don't understand how to access i mean what kind of the word or the keyword that they must uh, use in the youtube maybe directly i think you can close the oh, okay and then okay 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 i will stop this at first Can you see the oh not this slide perfect? With sound, I think please don't forget to click the sound. Okay. So for remote sensing yourself, I think so many databases, yeah. A million, I think, because there's uh and you can uh, learn uh many aspects from uh from NASA, from many agency from JAXA also. For example, if you click, uh, if you type uh, ocean remote sensing like this, this is just uh, a simple uh, animation. Uh, this is, for example, land surface temperature. Uh, but many, uh, this is ocean remote sensing. How, uh, okay, we, maybe we can, uh, this is from the uh, geoscience. Yes, this is the... Okay. Can you see the, the video? Uh, we can see the video, but I think you forget to click the screen maybe when you share the video. What? What, Sensei? When you share screen. Yes. And you click the file, I mean the link, and then also please click in the... Uh, button left side the sound so the, therefore now we we cannot hear the sound of this video the sounds please uh please uh go to the uh, uh, out from this share screen okay and then now you select the share screen again mm -hmm. and then oh share uh, sound yeah yeah okay yeah okay. sound yeah <laughs> oh sound YouTube okay sorry. yeah 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 so therefore we cannot hear the for the the sound of this video. Okay. To first sail okay, them and then dive into them. Nowadays, oceans are our close friends, a great source of food stock and a really helpful source of information about our world, teaching us about climate and natural disasters. Thanks to global observations, extreme weather events such as tropical cyclones or explosive mid-latitude storms and polar lows can now be more accurately predicted and tracked. Challenges facing ocean remote sensing are as unlimited as the variety of sea surface dynamic and meteorological conditions across the globe and the range of spatial and time scales. The increasing quality, quantity and duration of these ocean observations are then critically important for practical applications as well as to assess local or global climate changes both from natural and man-made influences. 
motion monitoring certainly demands skills in making continuous observations and real-time interpretations in a wide range of spatial scales, from meters to hundreds of kilometers. This is why available global observations from space are an indispensable tool to analyze these large areas of the planet. With remote sensors, we can look at the oceans using different techniques, which allows us to study the ocean color. We see ocean blue because it reflects the blue color of the sky. However, if there are any suspended particles in the water, the color will slightly change. Measuring the ocean color allows us to know which kind of particles are present and their concentration, such as chlorophyll, yellow substance, and sediments in suspension. And when the water is very transparent, we can even estimate the depth of the sea and classify the different types of algae. Ocean surface. Synthetic aperture radars can provide very fine details of the ocean surface and they can see through the clouds. They are very useful tools to detect sea surface currents or to detect targets such as ship or oil spills. Wind speed. Radar scatterometers are used to measure the wind speed and direction in the surface of the ocean. This helps us to improve our climate studies and to better understand the air-sea interaction. But when it's time to monitor hurricanes, we use microwave radiometers, a very precise tool. Ocean topography. The surface of the ocean bulges outward and inward, mimicking the topography of the ocean floor. At global scale, these bumps are indicators of currents and changes in water density associated to temperature and salinity and can be measured by radar altimeters. Ocean salinity and temperature. Small variations in ocean surface salinity can have dramatic effects on the water cycle and ocean circulation as salinity determines seawater density. As ocean stores more heat in the uppermost three meters than the entire atmosphere, its circulation is key to maintaining Earth's climate. Studying the ocean can help us to foresee upcoming natural threats, such as El Nino event, a cyclical climatic phenomenon related to the warming of the eastern equatorial Pacific. Anticipating it, we can save many lives and economic losses. Okay, I think it's very uh, nice video from uh, uh, IEEE uh, Geoscience and uh, IEEE Association. So uh, you can explore more about the video on the YouTube. Just type, for example, in my uh, area is ocean remote sensing. But if you interest on the other uh, subject, you can just so because remote sensing now is uh, uh, very uh, popular and now it's golden hits of remote sensing i think so many uh, in, uh scientists and so many uh university uh, established the, the lecture of this kind of remote sensing but of course we need to uh, discuss uh, the specific term and example in our area actually so i think that's the video sensei and uh, all students so we can continue Okay, uh, it's no question. I will continue, yeah. So uh, for the application itself, so there's also so many uh, application for the uh, coastal area and uh, ocean. So already uh, mentioned some in the previous slide, but this is the list that I can summarize. Uh, marine protected areas, Marine fisheries, animal migration, water quality, like all in the video, yeah, harmful algae bloom, eutrophication, coral reef health, marsh subsidence, and cost, and also a uh, disaster like uh, flooding, sea level rise, and something. This is the coastal and uh, open ocean application of remote sensing that already, uh, to say, done by many uh, researchers and many uh, study. So I will try to show some example. This is a, a good example, uh, just provided by the JAXA, Japan. 
uh, they uh, how to say uh, 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 provide uh, uh, software or application call it uh, Jasmine JAXA satellite based monitoring network system for uh, APO I mean sort of. so this is the uh, some uh, application for the agriculture uh, used for the estimating the surface area of planted rice field and the prospect for rice so uh, from the figure you can see that there is so many uh, data can uh, be uh, grabbed from the remote sensing data from the precipitation drought soil moisture moisture sorry solar radiation surface temperature vegetation index and an anomaly anomaly and other uh, anomaly that we can analyze also from the, the data. So uh, finally, uh, this application, uh, 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 this data, satellite data, can uh, be uh, uh, used to produce the, to say the uh, key uh, parameter like uh, uh, this uh, B2. So this is B2 in the upper one, this is B2 image. So the, 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 uh, to say the temperature uh, uh, in the uh, rice field area, and then uh, uh, B2 is uh, showing the uh, precipitation or amount of rain. So uh, by this uh, data set, by the satellite data, of course, uh, people can understand why uh, this area, the rice field is prospected or not or something like that, because the the condition of uh, environmental like uh, rain temperature is uh, indicating the difference between each spot like this. So this is the, the direct analysis from the software. It's very good, very good application actually by JAXA. Uh, I think our students need to explore this more if you want to study about the, for example, coastal area, main group and other area like that. So this is the, 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 the first example and this the second one is uh, like uh, hurricanes or a case yeah uh, already mentioned in the video see, you can explore more so not only in uh, atlantic but in the pacific like japan uh, very intensive uh, how to say a uh, uh, pathway of the embryo or uh, pathway of the uh, typhoon yeah it's very strong affected the japanese coastal especially in the uh, eastern part of uh, Japan. And then the other application that interesting uh, make a uh, very interesting is the how this remote sensing combined with the GIS used to identifying uh, at risk uh, properties. So by the satellite data, we can make a classification for area, which one is uh, very potential for uh, a, a damage uh, strong damage and low damage, like so by the color, that will influence of the insurance uh, to say payment, like something like that. So, but we don't use this in, in, in Indonesia yet, maybe in, in other country already, yes, because this study in the US, yeah. So, but for Japan case, uh, they use this for uh, agricultural insurance. Yeah, I knew from my, uh, some of Sensei in Chiba University doing research also like that uh, to what to say to construct the cons uh, this, the insurance system using the satellite data uh, for the habitat uh, mapping the coral reef uh, spread of brown mass restoring and preserving wetland and preparing areas determining marine protected area boundaries so this is just one one example uh, beautiful image from the uh, high resolution data iconos so very clear, we can uh, distinguish between the seagrass. Maybe Professor Artana already explained characteristic of the seagrass, coral, and seaweed. Yeah. But for seagrass, uh, this uh, very clear from the satellite data. And this is the coral. Red one is the coral area. And also sand and also some uh, small island here. So uh, satellite data uh, by the uh, some uh, formulation, we can understand very Pass and very uh, how to say white copper to 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 identification of the habitat. Uh, in, yes, yes. Uh, how about the marine debris in this case? Uh, plastic. Uh, okay, sensei. Thank you for this. Is a good question. 
for the marine debris yeah recently uh since uh oh, maybe three four years ago no scientists turn on to the study this uh, and now still on development the algorithm how to detect this but uh, uh myself uh, also doing this just for the uh, identification of the spectral of the marine uh, litter in the ocean uh the result is so the the, the, the study so that uh, there's the high potential to use satellite data to identification of marine debris especially uh, marine litter in in the, the surface ocean surface yeah there's the the specific spectral by the plastic a styrofoam and then also other uh floating uh, material in the ocean it's very very uh promising uh, technique actually sensei Oh, okay. Thank you. So, especially for animal who already trapped by net or maybe web, something like that. So, because I saw in video that there is a turtle uh, because yeah. their neck <laughs> already trapped by a web or net. So, therefore, yeah. if it is possible, uh, it will be very helpful. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think this uh, uh, related to the the some species that very uh, sensitive with the plastic. Yeah, like turtle and yeah. Hopefully, I will uh, uh, go to that uh, part. Yeah, in in the future. Uh, sorry, there's also some question from this uh, Made in the okay. chatting. Maybe you already explained, but maybe you can emphasize again. Uh, mm. something that very uh, good information for them okay uh, oh yeah from chat yeah from this yeah. Yeah. Uh, remote sensing can be used to measure vegetation of the mangrove canopy copper in the coastal area okay thank you uh, yeah uh, this uh, uh, anything on the surfaces uh, can be observed by the remote sensing yeah uh, if uh, as long as the uh, produce the reflectance and emittance and also backscatter the three term they can observe yeah of course mangrove as the one of the vegetation as i already explained before this uh will uh green green color will uh to say uh dominate uh, ex uh dominating the reflectance and can observe by the sensor already uh, done or uh, mangrove already done uh, since 20 years ago yeah so now now they was, they developed the more advanced techniques to identify the the mangrove condition and species condition not only can, uh, canopy copper but the condition where is the health health mangrove where the uh, uh, bed mangrove where is the uh, uh, to say green uh, where is the species a b c and how is the carbon stock yeah, until then? So this uh, is very possible and very uh, 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 already done yeah, by the many studies. Thank you, Made. Is that enough, Made? Is that answer to your question? I interrupt again. This this Made Prabayu. Can you give uh, a response? Okay, it's okay. Uh, okay, pa okay. Pakaram. Yes. Uh, in the first, in the beginning of your lecture, you mentioned that sensing, uh, using kite, yeah, using uh, or we can call layang layang or kite. Uh, what do you think about drone? No, we have a drone and we set up, and this is more portable and maybe resolution higher, maybe uh, if you compare with the remote sensing like this. What do you think about drone sensing? Ah, oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, drone is uh, no is powerful uh, uh, remote sensing uh, instrument. Yeah, so I use drone also for uh, research to measure the seagrass. I will show the result later. Uh, of course, uh, drone uh, kite is uh, kite is the uh, no is no no more. Uh, Remote sensing using kite because the unstable uh, yes. uh, movement of kite, but yes. drone also unstable. But there is the 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 
uh, let's say instrument that can uh, stabilize the drone. Uh, uh, and is... now, uh, mostly use uh, many research use drone for the the, the small scale. This is for small scale. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right? so it's just old, uh, old It's kind of the what is it? Uh, working distance, something like that. All, all this uh sensing without uh what is it? Uh, some equipment. I mean, complete with the other equipment like laser or infrared. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the uh, drone. <laughs> uh, yeah. The 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 specification of drone also many many drone like uh from small to uh big uh, UAV. Yeah. So they will carry a different sensor and many UAV use uh also uh uh to say uh employ the uh, leader laser. Yeah, leader, yeah, yeah. yeah, employ the leader. But we don't uh we don't use that yet. So uh lidar is uh, very expensive, I think, because not mm. so uh common. But for drone, for drone use only RGB. Uh, I think uh, everybody have drone now. Almost my student also play drone, but uh, not specific for the multi spectral because also uh, this uh, uh, the price also is quite expensive. And or lidar uh, and infrared also can be used, of course. The other information maybe that we would like to know, uh, any what kind of the equipment that do you have for remote sensing study? If one student from KG would like to continue, for example, for master degree or just for uh, internship, because in case of uh, scholarship also available yeah, from Indonesia side, that if Japanese student would like to come to Indonesia, it could be promoted by the scholarship also. So what kind of the equipment that do you have? Uh, yeah, we, we, we have uh, various uh, instruments. First is we have for field study, we have a spectrophotometry to verify the chlorophyll A concentration in the vegetation or something. This is for field study. Yes. For the uh, remote sensing instrument, we have a drone. Yes. We have, uh, yeah, of course, we have computer, we have GPS, we have, yeah, we, we complete for the basic study of the remote sensing actually. But for satellite data, it depends on the uh, the training data. We, we can uh, use the pre-access data. Uh, many satellite data we already collected from the uh, many uh, uh, source, like Landsat, Sentinel, SAR, Pulsar. So, so we can use also. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Sensei. Okay, we can continue to uh, just some slide more. Uh, this is for water quality. I think uh, in the video also this is also explained a little bit, like a storm and a water quality, a red tide and a well spill. Red tide is uh, very common because used to identify the quality of the beach. So this is an example of the mapping, uh, mapping of sea turtle habitat. Usually to know the where's the habitat, uh, where is the turtle feeding area is difficult. Uh, before the scientists found the way how to identify, but uh, by remote sensing technique, uh, now we understand the uh, turtle feeding area for species, uh, uh, particular species, specific species. The uh, feeding area is the prone area. Prone mean the the the, the dramatical uh, change of the parameter like a chlorophyll. This is the high chlorophyll and this is the low, very low chlorophyll. So in they identify the many turtle will uh, appear in this uh, line in the prone area. So this is the benefit of uh, satellite data when used for uh, identify the uh, sea turtle habitat. Yeah. So this is one I we done uh, this year. Uh, we uh, uh, to say uh, use drone to mapping the species of seagrass. So this is the, the drone coverage area. This is the picture from drone. We took about uh, 1,000 images and we mosaic the data. And after that, we do the classification and we produce the classification map like this. So the accuracy is uh, 65%. So we can understand now from the drone, we can know where's the Shimodosia rotundata, for example, where's the Haludole bonifolia, 
the location is in the Benua, in the very clear beach and very famous uh, tourism area also. So this is, for example, how drone uh, as a remote sensing uh, platform can be used to measure the underwater habitat like seagrass. Uh, and then this is very, uh, they're still, still under submission on the some uh, journal, but I can show the result now. Okay, uh, later on, if you are interested, you can discuss with us, with me. So this is the chlorophyll A in different season. This is a very famous result by Pak Dwi Susanto and Mara. And many scientists now uh, cite this uh, uh, study because the, using uh, chlorophyll A identification also can correlate with the a tuna fishing ground. A tuna, uh, how... Uh, uh, variability of the uh, tuna uh, in uh, salt uh, water of uh, Indonesian in Indian Ocean near in, uh, Indian or Indonesia. So this is a uh, different DGF in, in DG, December, January, February, it's June, July, August, different season, different chlorophyll A. So this is remote sensing for mapping uh, uh, sediment in Mahakam. So very clear, yeah, from the data, satellite data by using uh, spot from 10 years different there is uh, an uh, expand uh, of the sediment in the Makam. Makam in the near Kalimantan, yeah? uh, Makassar Strait. This is one application of how uh, the mode sensing to use to determine the spot or tourism area. Where is the diving site? Where is the snorkeling site? Where is the for beach uh, walk or something like that? This is the using the Alos Pulsar satellite from Japan data. So this is the map for, for the snorkeling and diving. I think uh, can use the satellite to determine that. This is my uh, topic also. I use uh, satellite to identify the internal waves or uh, soliton, one uh, of the phenomena that can uh, make uh, Navy uh, under Navy sinks, yeah? like uh, in 2020 in Indonesia in Bali Street. Uh, kapal selam tenggelam ya kalau orang Indonesia uh, because of this wave so this can observe by using uh, synthetic kapal turada this wave in the in Sulawesi near Sulawesi Island this is my uh, result use uh, Himawari uh, by Japanese uh, satellite data we can observe the wave also in Lombok this is the location of how the uh, Navy uh, zinger in this area ya until now this is still uh, uh, mystery but uh, one possibility is because this wave so this is the inflorescy we did it by so i think uh, that's all of the, uh, the to say the uh, this, uh, explanation about the, the application so before we uh, explain about the student task so this is the conclusion of our uh, class today. So we have delved into the uh, fascinating world of remote sensing, a technology that has uh, revolutionized our ability ability to gather information about the Earth from a distance. Yeah, the point is from a distance. Yeah. So throughout this uh, lecture, we explore also the fundamental principle underlying remote sensing, the various platform and sensor use, and the wide range of uh, application that benefit from its capabilities. I hope that uh, this, these insights uh, give you a small uh, knowledge. Uh, then we'll uh, drive you to, to make a, a interest yeah, in any aspect using a remote sensing technique. A satellite, drone, or, or UAV, or, and camera, and anything, this, as long as uh, this useful for your research. I think that's all of my class today. Uh, thank you. And this is the uh, student tax. But before that, you have any question or comment, student? OK, uh, this question from Tariko. You said that remote sensing can observe anything in the surface. How about in the deep sea? What is the deepest depth that can be reached in the sea? Okay, this is a very good question. So, uh, okay, for the uh, 
underwater observation. So the requirement is the the water must be clear, and sun uh, radiation can penetrate the depth. That's why we uh, we we uh, we call that uh, there is the the specific depth for remote sensing analysis in the under water is optical depth. Optical depth mean how depths uh, uh, are to say uh, sun uh, radiation can penetrate and can reflected by the object uh, in that in the water column. So for the deep ocean is impossible. This uh, difficult because uh, the wavelength cannot penetrate the 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 to say the uh, ocean uh, or water until uh, the sea floor. But for the how depth depend on the 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 the, the, the clear of the water. For example, in the in the Bali area, uh, there's uh, the uh, penetration uh, sun penetration until uh, it's until ten meters. That means we can or uh, uh, identify the object or observe the object uh, it's or ten meter under water. But for the dark area uh, and also turbid area, it's difficult. So we can use the remote sensing technique. Okay, I think that's the answer. Uh, Tariko. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any question? I think time almost up. So if not, I think this is the uh, tax for the next uh, evaluation. Hmm. So uh, this is the introduction. Uh, first, create a group. I think already, yeah. Uh, the three group use previous group, and then uh, each group discuss have discussion, discuss the content. Uh, group leader facilitating the discussion. So each group uh, should uh, choose one uh, coordinator or leader, and then each member has specific tasks and write it on PowerPoint, including the explanation and present your tax in one good presentation. I think this is the introduction. And the tax is this one, uh, this slide. So each group, uh, group one, group two, group three, should be try to explore uh, the remote sensing application for environment. Please select one, either agriculture, water resources, disaster management, and other term then you find. So this can be uh, sourced from the journal, from the books, or from the uh, anything in in your uh, scientific sources. Yeah. Uh, you can make summaries and explanation about this. For, for group one, please select in Indonesian case. You can select in any, any area in Indonesia. Group two, please select the Japan case. Uh, use the Japan case uh, any any kind of uh, issue that uh, solved by the remote sensing technique and study by remote sensing technique. and group three also Indonesia case but different with group one okay uh, please uh, uh, select uh, one of this and what should be discussed in this uh, presentation please find out uh, what all satellite data use in that in, in that uh, case. And then, uh, what is the characteristic of the data? What time data acquisition, date, yeah? source of the data, type of sensor, spatial resolution, temperature, and spectral resolution. Please uh, include this uh, on the presentation. And then please uh, make uh, summaries and your uh, comment or your opinion on the presentation by explain what is appendages and disadvantages of the data used uh, for its case. I think this is a simple task, but by this uh, task, I hope that uh, you understand for the at least for the uh, introduction of the remote sensing. I think that's that's all, uh, Sensei. Uh, student, if you have any question, we will discuss. Please. Okay, thank you very much, Gede Karang. So please uh, keep this slide, Gede uh, Karang, uh, Sensei, if you don't mind. Okay. 
uh, I think uh, don't close this uh, slide so student uh, can see the this uh, information until we start again around uh, one forty six I think yeah <laughs> actually we can start one forty but we already shift six minutes so we start from one forty six so please okay. come again one forty six okay I I will close uh this uh says uh, this session so let us uh, have a break thank you very much and please keep this okay. uh, slide thank you uh, okay thank you. thank you thank you Sanjay thank you student thank you. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, yes, Jose. Jose, yes. I think we are going to maybe one minute. Oh, okay, maybe no. Already one forty six. We are going to start, and I already prepare the what is it? Uh, the breakout room. There's a one, two, three, and maybe please you can, uh, know uh, as uh, the Karang Sensei will guide you. And maybe I will give time to Gede Karang Sensei. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Sensei. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> as uh, you can see on the uh, slide on the screen. So before we uh, spread it to the break room, yeah. So uh, I will give a uh, short uh, explanation about the student tasks. So again, I will repeat uh, what I already explained briefly before. So uh, for the next uh, final presentation of uh, environmental remote sensing, uh, you have to uh, prepare the uh, presentation, yeah, that will be presented, presenting in 24 August. So, group already divided, then please discuss with, uh, with uh, group, uh, its member or its student uh, should be involved on the discussion and be an active uh, participant, yeah. Uh, make a <coughs> result by the uh, works group yeah and make a presentation good presentation uh this is the to say a uh, general right yeah so i ask i request you all to make a presentation for each group so related to the uh, application of remote, or remote sensing application for environment <clears throat> this uh, please uh, uh, make a, a small research yeah, with your group for the like a literature study from the various uh, source related to application of uh, remote sensing for, for example for agriculture so many many uh, uh study or many result related to this so i think uh, and also water resources and disaster and, and so on yeah if you find uh beyond on this uh topic so please so the how to say the presentation should be uh, about the uh, case yeah, study for example in group one in indonesia so please find the uh, uh to say a uh, issue about uh, the <clears throat> environmental issue then find the resources how the what is the remote sensing can be uh contribute on that issue and then uh from that uh remote sensing technique you can 
involve the discussion with uh, following uh, list yeah so you can uh, understand you will understand what satellite data or what uh, remote sensing platform use on that this is not limited to the satellite data yeah you can use uh, if you find uh, like uav drone or other technique you can also use that uh then uh, please uh, discuss also the characteristic of the dead data, like uh, the, the minimum uh, uh, explanation is should be consists of this, data acquisition, source of the data, type of sensor, spatial resolution, and so on. Then, of course, from that uh, issue, that uh, summary, that study, and also that data characteristic, you can uh, make uh, what to say uh, <clears throat> explanation about the advantages and disadvantages of the data in a specific study like as you chose before. Uh, maybe uh, that's uh, the explanation. So if you have a question about this task, please discuss now before you join the break room for each group. Or do you understand about the, the, the tax or? I think it's not difficult yeah, to, to understand this. So everything is clear. If so, you we can continue the preparation and discussion uh, for each group. Each group uh, following the uh, Bibin Sensei already prepare the break room, break room, yeah, break out, <laughs> uh, break out. Sorry, I'm sorry, break out. So you can join the break out. So, uh, maybe uh, Karang Sensei, uh, yes, yeah, please uh, keep this share. Uh, I mean, huh? keep this slide uh, similar like this. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. So sometimes maybe student would like to check again. Yeah, something like this. Okay, thank you. Don't close. Okay, you can join to the breakout room. You can start. And one of us, uh, maybe uh, Greg Karang Sensei and also uh, To Sensei and me will visit you. Jadi karang sense. So yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So this is just ten meter, yeah. To to what is it to detect just until three meter from the surface of water, yeah. Uh, ten meter, yeah. Uh, up to ten meter. Yes, it depend on the the the, the water uh, quality and also wave, yeah. A wave, yeah, of course, wave, and then mm -hmm. uh, yeah, usually we can uh to say use on the uh to say calm water like in the lagoon. Oh, lagoon, yeah. Lagoon and mm -hmm. if uh to say uh. Brick water like uh, surf area is typical to play. Cho Sang, please join to room number two because uh, Sensei, uh, To Sensei, waiting for you. Cho Sang, please join to room number two. Breakout number two. Hello, Cho Sang. Okay. Uh, still, still yeah. here. So it is not possible yet for discovery tracer. Tracer discovery. 
Ah, oh, <laughs> because maybe use other technique like a uh, echo sonder, still remote sensing, but not not on Continue recording. でそれで今日はまあお休みするということなんですけど、あのビビン先生がズームであの録画を撮ってもらってるんで、それを見てあのプレゼンの時には参加しますということでしたんで、あのとりあえず今日、ザンさんの方で、はいえー、とプレゼンの大まかな構成を決めてしまって、分担をこちらやってくださいっていうふうにあの投げてしまったらいいかなと思ってます。なので、えーとそのはい、先ほどの講義だと、リモートセンシングで日本のケースをなんか考えなきゃいけないわけですよね。で、まあ、衛星でもいいし、ドローンでもいいみたいなこと言われてたんで、はい、何か、えー、とそれをまたウェブで探して、えーとえー、話せそうな内容を、えーとえー、決めなきゃいけないんだけど、だから、例えば、一つはチャンさんが、えーとおえー、とお衛星の方をやって、でコテラさんの方に、えー、とドローンの方をやってもらうとか、何かそういうふうに役割分担してもいいし、うんはい、同じあの衛星の方の話で、センサー部分のところを自分がやって、でどういうデータが得られるかっていうのをコテラさんにやってもらうとか、なんかそこら辺をちょっと決めてもらったらいいかなと思います。はいうんはい、今ちょっとなんか探してみましょうか。えっ、ー、と、日本衛星。Hello, j o s h a m j o s h a m Yes. yes.、Uh, so, if you would like to see the last year presentation from Uh, Gede Karang Sensei, you can check up yeah, in the、mm. uh, YouTube yeah, channel. But、uh, today presentation,、okay. uh, I try to、uh, revise the video and submit maybe tomorrow night, maybe because it will、uh, take time、yeah, with my、uh, software. So I must cut、uh, something, something and then I will、uh, release again. Yeah,、uh, yes. check, uh, check the uh, What is it? KGU SciTech、uh, channel. Yeah. Do you know that channel?、Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Please But, subscribe. So yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. えっと今画面共有したんですけど見えてますかね。さんさん見えてる？はい。Yeah. えっと、これ、えっ、ー、と、日本のなんか衛生利用事業の話で、はい、えっ、ー、と、災害対策、主力空間情報、農林水産業、土木インフラ。今日の話だと、やっぱり海洋状況把握っていうのが関係しますかね。海洋からのさまざまな人為的また自然の脅威に対するというところなんで,、うんはい、で、ここをもっとこ、これ、えっと、ここをちょっと記,記憶しておいてもらったらいいと思うんですけど、アースグラフィ,グラフィーの衛星利用事業っていうところで検索してもらったら、あのここのサイトにたどり着くと思うんで、で、ここに行って、ここをちょっともっと詳しくを見ると、図なんかもここから取れそうなやつがありますし、Tadi sini lewat、uh, saya uh, uh, discuss ya. Jadi、uh, setiap mahasiswa its、uh, student should be contribute on the presentation. Okay,、uh, if you have any question or or uh, to say. Uh, Comment you can write on the chat room or just mention here. Please continue your work.、Uh, okay. Gado, gado. 
Bali go also no problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think uh, Diana student has a good yeah. uh, willing. I think to... Norma also can speak Bali, I think. To learn English, yeah. Yeah, Yustika Pak Pahan also can speak uh, Bali go. Mm. <laughs> Okay, please continue. Okay, uh, Justin, just uh, please rejoin. Jadi silakan diatur ya koneksinya dan bisa mengkoordinir teman-temannya. But still better offline, ya, Sensei? Yeah, yeah, offline. Much better offline. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we must hopefully. design one day. Yeah, about this one because from Indonesia go to Japan and vice versa also Japan to Indonesia not so difficult I think. Hmm. Especially for Indonesia student visiting Japan now, hmm. less than two weeks is okay. Visa is not yeah. so difficult. Yeah, we just uh thinking that if this can be, how to say, uh, held offline. Yeah. So I think okay, I will join to the other room. Hello. Hello. Kabarnya? Sudah, sudah didiskuskan. Nanti tunggu ya Pak Gede Karang datang. Oh iya. Yeah. Lagi di ruang Iya, iya, Pak. Oke, okay, good afternoon all. Good students. Eta, Tariko. Eprim, ya? Eprim also here, ya? Uh, iya, Pak. Hmm. Oh, lagi di Madewi, ya? Uh, iya, Pak. Iya, Pak. Pak. Di, kita lagi okay. di istirahat, Pak. Oke, okay, ya. Uh, ya siapa koordinator di sini di grup tiga? Tari Pak. Tari itu siapa? Oh Made ya, Made ya. Eh Tari Pak. Hah? Tari ko? Iya Pak. Oke. Okay. Where Tari ko? Tari ko? Are you here? Nabi sudah ya hari ini? Iya Bapak, Nabi sudah. <laughs> Dapat kabar, iya ya Pak Hendrawan juga ya, lupa saya. Uh, Eprim, uh, nanti tolong ini ya, uh, dikasih tahu tarik tarik ya, karena mungkin koneksinya ini. Tolong oh, mulai iya. uh, ini ya, dirancang ya. Ada waktu sampai uh, tanggal 24. Bilang kita. Ya. Nah, tanggal 23 aja nih. Tanggal 23, 24 kan sudah presentasi. Uh, ya, ya, Pak. Oh, Pak ya, silakan. Ini, kita sudah diskusi, Pak. Kita sepertinya ingin mengangkat Disaster. bencana tsunami. Kita mau okay. gunakan. Kita di mau ngolah. Palu. Di Kota Palu. Kita mau ngolah datanya pakai data DEM, Pak. Kita mau oh. ambil datanya USGS. dari USGS. Kebetulan kemarin kita sempat belajar juga sama Pak Aan. Uh -huh. Nah, dah di situ kan uh, kita ti, kita nanti mau mutain daerah tsunami yang tahun 2018, Pak. Oke, okay, that's good. Ya kalau langsung juga tapi, bisa. Tapi cuman sekitar daerah dekat sana cuman lima kecamatan gitu aja yang mencakup gitu, Pak. Hmm, oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, good. Tadi datanya diperjelas ya, pertegas ya data apa yang digunakan ya. Oh, baik, baik Pak. Mungkin nanti kita memasukkan data tutupan lahannya, ketinggian elevasi daerahnya juga, sama data pasang surut eh gelombang, gelombang tertingginya juga nanti kita masukkan Pak untuk tsunaminya. Oke, okay. ya, ya silakan uh, dilanjutkan. Nanti diskusinya tekniknya kan bisa uh, sekarang sampai waktunya selesai dan juga uh, online ya uh, dari punya grup ya. Baik, ya, Bapak. Baik. Ya, ya, silakan lanjut ya. Baik, Bapak. Share screen. Ya, PT.
gini. Ya, nggak tahu. Apa? Resolusi. Eh, coba lihat judulnya apa? Tutupan. Perubahan perkotaan. perkotaan. Lah, oh, gara-gara gempa uh, Sulawesi. Eh, ada kok kita jurnal-jurnal kemarin, kemarin uh, itu. Yang terpenting sih di PP itu udah pakai jurnal kan? Waktu nah, <laughs> kita juga udah pakai ini, flowchart. Uh, uh, ini ya? Mm -mm. Tuh, ini ada loh semua. Coba buka ini. Nah, ini kita masukin aja itu frame. Yang yang apa? yang ini inter bukan yang odifik yang kita. Belum banget iya. warna -warni Kamu kan? buat laptopmu kan? Bawa, bawa. Bisa kan masukin? Bisa, Bisa kan? Itu kan? Itu apa namanya? Gelombang. Gelombang. Eh, tapi sesuai sesuai data kan itu? Mm -mm. Orang itu data ini udah. Ini band -nya. Kita tinggal nyari enggak sih? Kita pakai ini RGB nih. Mm -mm. Ini berarti ini RGB. Ini kok bukannya RGB? Ini Nier. apa ya? Infrared. Apa ya? Infrared gitu. Nir. Coba cari. Di Google. Nggak tahu. Eh, tapi ini. Itu juga jadi penasaran. Tapi kita nggak tahu ini ya? Tahu nggak sih? Coba buka USGS. Google, Google. Google, Google. Gak usah, ini nih harus tutup dulu nggak sih ta? Gak ya? Ya udah di sini aja tambah ini. Near infrared band keren sih apa? USGS. Kemarin kita downloadnya eh tapi yang gelombang tapi kan kita downloadnya ini frame hmm. kalau gelombang tuh kita nyari tanggalnya per tanggal sekian kemarin mm -hmm. berarti kita ini bikinnya per bulan itu toh ya kan ke bulan ini kemarin kita berapa bulan bang ke bulan Bisa. Agustus eh oh, ya dia cuma lagi sebulan kalau dekat dekat bisa kita nggak perlu lagi harusnya di mana kamu ambil Enggak, bukan di USGS. Hmm? Begini ngambil kemarin. Ini Apa sih namanya? Ko Korpornikus. Kopernikus. Kopernikus. Coba, coba. Koper. Itu, itu. Itu, itu. Ini. Eh, ini kolah. Ya. Nah, ya, itu dah. Eh, bukan. Orang Kopernikus. Eh, eh, du. Bukan, iya. bukan Alaska. Iya. Enggak, Prem. Yang kita mau bikin ODV itu enggak di Alaska. Aku download. Nih, nih. Oke. Oke. Nih, nanti. Ini enggak sih? Enggak. Ih. Eh, coba yang di... Operniskus.co.com Tapi kita jadinya kurang apa? Kurang nyari ininya berapa, resolusinya berapa gitu kita gitu, kan? Hmm. So, ini kita tinggal buka ini. Masih keren. Apa? Ya, enggak, enggak, di laptop kamu tahu. Apa? Data. Oh, di laptop kamu enggak ngeluh di ODV ya? Oh, oh. Di laptop kamu. Eh, enggak, kita enggak nyari ininya. Itu loh. Kan BPA, bisa enggak ya? sih dari situ? Coba. Curiga aku. Amit jadi dulu. Ini yang mana nih? Ini yang mana nih? Ini. Emang gak ada pekaran? Emang gak. Ada. Ada.
kok kamu bisa identitas ya. ya ya betul jadi seperti itulah uh, menyusun ini ya apa scientific uh, apa namanya tadi jadi sumbernya harus jelas jenis datanya kapan itu sehingga nanti bisa dirujuk atau bisa diulangi kalau ada ada yang buat itu nanti kalau ya, ya, itu tidak lengkap tidak jelas datanya nanti dari mana asalnya mengulangi susah intinya kalau metode scientific itu harus bisa di ulangi oleh uh, peneliti lain dengan cara yang sama mestinya dapat hasil yang sama gitu. oh, tapi iya. kalau adik-adik mau merujuk atau men summary riset uh, peneliti lain juga tidak apa-apa jadi yang mending uh, tadi apa uh, data kontribusi remote sensingnya di mana gitu ya isunya apa nah, seperti itu aja karena ini kan itu ada aksesnya padahal ada mengenal remote sensing dulu ah oh, ya baik 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 pak ya. Uh, so I think uh, let's uh, join some again. reorganization is required. I think. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, we can. Yeah, they are still in the uh, breakout room. Thank you. Yeah.
Alo, tôi xem xét. Hello. Uh, so I think no time is over. So already 5.22. So I think we are going to close this session. Uh, okay. I think I will give time to you. And thank you, Pa Gede Karang. Okay, Gede Karang Sensei. Okay, Sensei, thank you. So, thank you very much. Terima kasih. Okay. Please open again your <laughs> camera. So you want to take a picture? It's possible. <laughs> Just for one minute. Yes. Yes, of course. Hello. This is <laughs> one of very important. Uh, <laughs> the connection, I think, is very difficult now. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's the student? <laughs> okay. Please, student, join. Uh, Cho Sang, can you open your camera? Yeah. So, okay, thank you, Norma. Justika Pakpahan. And Dia Yastini, okay. Dima Debening, okay. Justika Pakpahan. And Cho Sang. <laughs> Wait a, uh, wait a minute to student. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chosang, thank you very much, Chosang. Okay, and Yustika Papahan. Hello. The last is Yustika Papahan. Sorry. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Several times, uh, Yustika Papahan also always access and then leave again because maybe some problem. Okay, thank you very much, I think. So... Uh, say, would you like mm -hmm. to close? Uh, yeah, okay. So let's close today's lecture and see you next Monday. So okay. stay healthy. Okay, okay sampai healthy jumpa lagi. <laughs> sampai jumpa, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, so, thank you all, students. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, please also so, access to KGU Science Text. Yeah. <laughs> to see some, also, I always. Upload new video. Thank you. Please visit KGU Sciatec. Sciatec. Okay, okay. I will close. Okay, I will okay, close. Okay, see you, Sensei. Thank see you. you.